Australia has some wonderful landscapes. This is up there with the very best of them, the Gold Coast of Australia in the state of Queensland. 47 kilometers of pristine beaches and surfing is just part of the enjoyment. Surfer's paradise at the heart of the Gold Coast with the warm waters and the high rise and the lakes make it all the place to be. But we're going indoors for the Total BWF Sertiman Cup for 2017, where 27 countries have participated in this wonderful tournament. And at the Gold Coast Sports and Leisure Centre, a brand new facility, which will be prepared, of course, for the Commonwealth Games next year. But right now, it's the show court that we're looking at. Many of these players have been on there. All the 27 countries have been uh, divided into three groups. Group three there with seven countries, eight countries in group two. The final was yesterday, Vietnam beat Singapore. And in group one, China are the defending champions. And they've won this event an amazing 10 times since its inception in 1989, when Indonesia won the inaugural event and Korea have won it three times. But it's a monopoly for China. Well, China, tonight it's a semi-final, it's familiar ground for them, and for Japan it's only their second time in the semi-finals. In fact, tonight's semi-final is a repeat of last Sudaman Cup two years ago, the final, where Japan were runners-up. And earlier today, Korea beat Thailand three matches to one to take their place in the final. Confirmation then that Korea are in the final, they beat uh, Thailand 3-1 in matches and tonight we're looking forward to the might of China and we might say to the might of Japan it could be mightily close this one. The entire Chinese squad getting together for the huddle and what a whole galaxy of names they have there, Chen Long and Lin Dan. Lin Dan, who will be playing tonight, is the 2008 and 2012 Olympic champion in the men's singles. And they've got champions in every category, from junior right up to senior. It is really a pantheon of greats that you're looking at right there for the Chinese badminton squad. Japan have played well through this Sertiman Cup. And they have the Olympic champions in the women's doubles in Masaki, Matsutomo, and Ayaka Takahashi. They have the world number three in Akane Yamaguchi. She's just 19 years of age. And Japan do fancy their chances tonight in this semi-final. Might there be an upset? Japan and China. No, we're going to start with the mixed doubles. And the mixed doubles, Zheng Siwei and Cheng Ching Chen for China. And uh, they have a number one ranking against Yuta Watanabe and Arisa Higashino. We move on to the men's singles. Lin Dan, the most decorated badminton player of all time from China. Twice Olympic champion, he will play Kenta Nishimoto, 22 years of age, with a world ranking of 61. Then we move on to the men's doubles, where Li Junhui and Liu Yuchen have a world ranking of three against Japan's number five world ranking, Takeshi Kamura, Keigo Sonoda. If we get this far, it's the women's singles. Sun Yu for China, with a world ranking of six, against Akane Yamaguchi, she's just 19, she's world ranked three, but Sun Yu has beaten her three times out of the sixth, out of the five that they've played. Tonight is their sixth. And it's the women's doubles to finish, and of course, Masaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi are the world, are the Olympic champions against Chen 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 and Jia Yifan.
This is the magnificent trophy. It stands so tall. You can't hold it for too long. It's so heavy. The wonderful Surdeman Cup, which was inaugurated in 1989, named after Dick Surdeman, an Indonesian badminton player. Massive roar here inside the Gold Coast Sports Complex for China's mixed doubles pairing of Jin Xiwei and Chen Jingchen with a world ranking of number one. And following them, the Japanese pairing of Yuta Watanabe and Arisa Higashino. Watanabe, the left-hander, and Higashino with a world ranking of 22. Alongside me, Lars Uwe, former coach, head coach of the uh, Danish national team. Lars, it, it promises to be a fantastic semi-final, but what about the lineup of the Chinese? Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic tie uh, we're going to be, be watching tonight, I'm sure. But uh, it's quite extraordinary that, that the Chinese uh, has made a, a brand new team compared to yesterday's uh, quarterfinal. And um, that's, that's very unusual. Uh, but it also shows the depth and the strength in, in their team um, because uh, neither of those two teams uh, was weak. Toss, a red and a black in Japan. Red for blue, black for you. Black. This side. Serve or receive. Receive. You will receive. You will receive. Arisa. Who will serve? Service. Okay. This is Arisa Higashino, 20 years of age. Higashino and Watanabe won the bronze in the Junior World Mixed Doubles in 2014. And against them then, Chen Kin Chin Chen was one of their opponents. But now for China, Chen Xiwei at 20 years of age, World rank number one with his partner Chen Ching Chen. Four time BWF Super Series titles. The Malaysia Open this year. Last year, the Dubai, French, and Japan titles. And seven time Grand Prix gold titles. They've just about done it all. And extraordinarily, they didn't play in the quarterfinals. That's the point Lars Ue is making. It's a completely new lineup for China in this semi final. They did drop the one game there against Chinese Taipei. We look here at the left-handed Yuta Watanabe. He's the world rank 22. Just in March, he had a world ranking of 15 in mixed doubles. 19 years of age, Yuta Watanabe of Japan. And uh, his partner is Arisa Higashino. From Hokkaido, in Japan, former junior world mixed doubles champions. Actually, they won the bronze in the junior world mix, and that was in 2014, the bronze medal. So they've just played the once, they've just played the once against Malaysia. So not a lot of uh, time on court for either team. Well, it's the Chinese pairing who lead 2-0 in the head-to-head, -head, the last meeting in the Malaysia Open not so long ago this year. How do you see this, Lars, as a, you're a former, uh, well, I'm saying a countryman, fellow countryman, Hendrik Boris Olsen, his umpire, and in the chair is Ivo Cassell of Switzerland. How do you see this? I, I see, uh, obviously, Chinese uh, pair rank one in the world and uh, has done tremendously well uh, since they uh, came as, as junior world champions and, and entered the, 
senior uh, tournaments and, and went almost straight up to, to number one in the world. Um, I see them as, as clear favourites in, uh, in this match. Yes, let me just correct myself. The, the Japanese pairing, they won the bronze medal in the Junior World Mixed Doubles in 2014. And uh, against them, when they did that, was Cheng Chen, who would have been just 16 when she played. That was the World Junior Mixed Doubles. But all that's history. Tonight is a semi-final in the Total BWF Sudelman Cup 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, my right, China, represented by Seng Shui, Chen Kuchin. And on my left, Japan, represented by Yuta Watanabe, Arisa Higashino. China to serve, Chen Kuchin to Arisa Higashino. Love all. Bye. Nice uh, point to win the lock. first on the board for Arisa Kirkashino for Japan. Hey. Oh. from uh, Watanabe and, and in my mind the opening of, of this first game is very important for the Japanese they, they want to feel that they are able to compete and and can they get a good start here and, and, and get away and they, they might make uh, the favorites from China a little bit nervous and, and that could be their chance of, of uh, taking a, a surprising uh, first match here in the tie Interception at the net. She uh, anticipates Two, that Watanabe three. will go cross court with his uh, with his forehand there from this one, and, and she covers the backhand of her partner and, and can make a block at the net. Oh. Uh, Yuto Watanabe with the winner. After just six points. Serves over. Well, you can see how pumped up Chen Ting Chen is here. Three, four. She is really fired up. Yeah, and the speed is very high here. Both sides are trying to uh, to find openings in the in the flat drives, uh, pushing the shuttles toward the opponent's uh, backcourt corners. It's wide. It's out. It's over. Five, three. Higashino. Yeah, good touch by Higashino, who is also very skillful with the racket. Um, she deceived the opponent here by showing she wants to play with power, and, and then she blocks it instead. And you can see here from this angle that the shot is slightly behind her, and that's why she doesn't give it full power, because then she was very likely to, to make a mistake. Six, 
tremendous cohesion by the Japanese team there. Yeah, and if we get the Seven, slow here, we, we can notice how much both uh, female players at the net are working sideways in order to uh, to cover for these flat drives uh, for their partners. So, so the male players only has to uh, has to cover or can focus on covering one side. It's it's very skillful badminton and, and they are looking for the gaps on, on on the opposite half all the time and uh, Cheng Ji Wei will, will not be too happy with this mistake because he was actually in, in quite good control there um, but plays it uh, the angle a little bit too steep. 27 shots that rally. Watanabe with the smash winner. And this is just the start that Japan wanted in this semi-final. 9-3. Yeah, exactly. And and I don't know if it's uh, intentional uh, or it's it's like you could say a habit from when he's playing against right-handed players. But but Shiwe is, is playing a lot to Watanabe's forehand side, and and I think he uh, he needs to alternate a little bit and, and play the backhand side as well. Smash ends up in the net from Chen Chen Ten. And it's 10 3 to Japan in this opening game. Saw the opening. Court was beckoning for the winner. Yeah, exactly. But but uh, Four, a good attack here from Sue and uh, they try to isolate her in the one side. And the right thing to do is to try to go cross court because that's where the opening is. But but couldn't quite make it. Tremendous start for interval. the Japanese pairing of Watanabe and Higashino. And at the interval, after six minutes, it's Japan who lead 11 4. against the team who has the number one ranking in the world from China. Steps over. Five, eleven. Yeah, and it's noticeable in, in this rally that, that uh, as we have seen before, the Chinese pair, they don't mind switching, switching positions and, and play uh, normal doubles where Xing Wei is at the net. 
they almost mis misunderstood each other here, but, but uh, won the point anyway. 12 5. And we see the same thing from the Japanese Watanabe after a good service return, stays at the net and, and uh, kills the next one. Good defense, and then again, it's Higashino who comes to the net, makes the winner. Yeah, it is, and, and um, I think uh, Chinese doubles head coach Jiang Jun uh, agreed with me that, that uh, Xing Jiwei should, should play Watanabe's backhand side uh, more than he did uh, before the interval, and, and he tried to do that in, in this rally, but uh, was not, it was not enough to, to win it. Japanese understanding Five. is firing on all cylinders here. Yeah, and very good control after this deceptive push from uh, Zheng Wei. Uh, but again towards uh, Watanabe's forehand side and, and very good control with the forehand there. He, he can play a counter. Six over. This time, Chen Jing Chen at the net. Yeah, and she is very aggressive at the net, and, and when she plays a, a quality shot like this one, it's very difficult to to play it flat in in, uh, in over her head or in within her her area. Um, she's very aggressive, and that's why it's so important that that Arisha um, uh, Higashino is, is so high on the net to to block uh, or to punish these first blocks 15, from uh, Chen has been very successful. We see it here. Before the Chinese has hit the shot and she's rushing towards the net, she knows she has to cover that shot. Oh, that's a miss. And she hasn't missed much tonight, Arisa Higashino. No, and again, she's, she's doing the right thing. Uh, she reads the game well, and, and you can see as soon as Xing Wei is below uh, the height of the net, then she's rushing to the net because she knows that, that he wants to, uh, to get on the offense and, and probably play the front court. Smashes it straight back at Higashino. Eight over. Five. Yeah, well, build up attack here. Yeah, he keeps his calm. I'm sure Higashino expected another power shot, but makes a block and, and then uh, she's making a, a lift that's too short that he can punish. Six over. But again, she, Higashino reached the game so well at the net. Uh, and 16 8. She again head starts and, and knows that that's the corner she has to cover. Um, and by doing that, she's very, very early on the shot in the front court. done their homework on how they're going to play this match. Yeah, they're looking very much for these uh, cross-court shots from, uh, from Cheng Xiwei's uh, backhand side, especially. 10, 16. Seaway. 17 10. 17 10. Japan leading in this mixed doubles. The opening match of the semi final. Oh. 
18-10. Yeah, misjudgment there by uh, Jiang Xiu Wei. Um, maybe, maybe the draft stops the the shuttle a little bit in that corner, and, and he gets surprised, and and it's obviously in because he he thinks it's not worth the challenge. Both teams looking back at their corner where the coaches 18. are sitting to get just a little affirmation, a little maybe an instruction. 11-18. Fails with the backhand. Watanabe. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure the coaches play a pretty big role in this match because the the, 12, the age of all 18. the players is, is uh, so low, so they, they, they haven't got a lot of experience playing for their country at this level, uh, obviously. So uh, so I think there are uh, lots of of uh, nerves involved in in this match as well. Higashino again. Gosh, he's played a fine match tonight she has for Japan 19 up 12. until now she has been really dominant in the front court and, uh, and that's why uh, Japan is, is is looking to uh, to win this first game well, the main reason there are other, other reasons as well Game point, game point for the Japanese in this opening mixed doubles. She's done it again. Arisa Higashino. She's reading the game so well and she's playing it so well. And Japan have taken first game the first game in the mixed doubles 21 12 after 16 minutes of high quality play. really set the tone for this titanic semi-final the mixed Play. doubles first match of the tie and it is the first game that has gone the way of japan a marker has been laid down Oh, you can't keep
goalkeeper out of any point. Arisa Higashino has one been in slot inspired for Japan. Yeah, and that's really the one thing that, that uh, the Chinese have to has to find the solution for that is how to get uh, their female player Chen Cheng Cheng um, on top of the game in, in the front court. And I think one way is is maybe to give a little more speed in, in the front court shots or play more flat drives because uh, Two, Higashino is, is rushing toward the net all the time and and uh, and she's successful because the, the Chinese players are both trying to block very tight um, at the net. In. It's in again. Three. Watanabe is pumped Japan up. Chains. He's pumped because he knows how well his partner is playing. Yeah, and as we saw one time earlier, so that they isolate uh, Higashino uh, straight in front of her, and, and this time she's successful with the with the cross court shot that uh, that she also tried earlier. Way to get his attack through this time. Um, One, three. Whereas last time uh, Higashino was uh, was successful with uh, with the cross court uh, smash return. But this time uh, she cannot return the, the power smash. Good return from Higashino. Four, one. Japanese pair here is so pumped, and I'm not saying that China are not. But it's going Japan's way virtually every point that's been played. Yeah, but they, Higashino especially has the momentum in the front court. And uh, she's she's meeting the shuttles earlier in the front court than, than her opponents on the other side. Change of racket. I'm not sure if a string went there for Watanabe, but made the error of the smash hitting the net. Yeah, he, he broke his string in, in the in the smash, and that was probably the reason why uh, Test, please. it went in the net. Sing. Test, please. Cheng Siwei is getting some instructions from his corner. They just have a couple of two practice hits four. here with the new racket. That's all they'll do, two or three hits, and then they'll, they'll resume. So 2-4, ah. ah. Japan are leading in this second game. <laughs> she is just firing Japan here. Yeah, and once again, Five, Arisa Higashino is, expects that uh, Jing Jiwei will go cross court from his backhand side and, and covers this uh, cross court flat drive, um, which has been a key and you know, one of the keys to uh, to the success up until now for for the Japanese side. So it's over. He was there, Watanabe couldn't make it on the backhand. No, but it's clever by, Three, by uh, Zheng Xiuwei to, to make some of these pushes toward the, the backhand side, so uh, Watanabe can't anticipate that, that they are all going towards the forehand. Four. Yeah, this time, Zheng Tingjian read it well. Four, five. Won that exchange in the front court with the uh, female partner. Opponent. Yeah, and, and she will be be very happy with this because this is uh, the way they they have to uh, to do if, if uh, they want to get back in this match. Big smash from Zheng Tiwei. The crowd is predominantly five supporting the Chinese team here tonight. Lots of Chinese flags all around. A lot of noise inside this wonderful facility. China, the defending champions. That's a rare error from Arisa Higashino. Yeah, and after a, a couple of Five. successful actions from uh, Chen Qing Cheng in, in the front court, then uh, it seems like for the first time Higashino has, has uh, 
thought, having second thoughts a little bit and hesitating a bit, and, and she can't do that. She has to believe in uh, like her intuition as she's done up until now and what she's seen on, on the video uh, prior to the match, because otherwise she'll be too late. Good variation in return here from Watanabe. That's out from Jane Siwei. Very well played from him. Like when they're losing the momentum a little bit, then, uh, then he's changing. Uh, changing the plan and, and doing something slightly different. in this second game. Seven, yeah, they, they have uh, regained a lot of the uh, momentum and uh, and it's, it's a very, very even even match right now. It's a pity for Higashino that, that uh, her second to last shot there doesn't go over uh, Chen Qing Chen uh, because she's almost getting out of the pressure. Now look at the Chinese female partner here, Chen Qing Chen. She's oh, fist pumping as well. Watch her here. Yeah, Six. and, and this, is, this is where she's normally so strong, uh, and, and she's, she's thrilled that, uh, that her normal game is, is finally showing uh, and, and finally getting through. Now it's a very good action, um, and well played by both sides. But this counter attack is very good. And again, Higashino, she doesn't have second thoughts. She's running to the place she she knows she has to be, and um, misses it. Uh, but but she's doing the right thing, and and it might as well has have been a point. This has just turned around, and Jen Chin Chen. I think they may as well throw some cold water on her because she's absolutely boiling over here for China. And they've turned it round the Chinese pairing in this second game. Exactly, they're they're back in the game and, and maybe have the slight advantage right now. Uh, Higashino is, is maybe trying a little bit too much at the moment. I'm sure that her coaches will will try to calm her down a little bit and, and tell her to keep moving, but but maybe choose a, a little bit safer shot than, than she's done the, the last few rounds. So at the interval in the second game, it's China who have taken the lead, the 11 6. Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. Eleven six. Play. after the mid-game interval here with another uh, very good action from uh, Higashino. First playing a, a soft, uh, quite safe uh, service return and then she's ready and over her head for, for the flat drive from uh, Xing Wei. Back to the court, Teng Siwei. 
Yeah, and the girls are really 12, fighting out a battle in the front court about the initiative. Uh, neither side wants to, to lift uh, to the opponents, and um, it's very, very important who, uh, primarily of the female players, uh, can play a shot that's below the net height, uh, because that gives the initiative. Disguise. Look at Chen Chen Chen. Yeah, and, and the Chinese pair, they China? they keep uh, playing the front court in, in order, uh, not having to lift. 13, and, and then finally, uh, Higashino is, is so late on, on the shot that, that she has to, to give away a lift, and, and that gives Chen away the opportunity of, of uh, playing his attack. Good return from Higashino. 8-13. But they are trailing Japan in the second game. 8-13. They took the first, 21-12. An inspired performance in that first game. Big smash this time from Chen Ting Chen. Fired up, aren't they? 14, yeah, they eight. are, and, and it was remarkable that that uh, even though, uh, especially Ching Ching, uh, Ching Ching was was fired up already before the interval, but it seemed like the coaches wanted even more because they they were very energetic in the coaching in, in the uh, mid game interval. The challenge. Coach. It's wide. It's out. Just sense. 15, the momentum eight. has gone away from the Japanese and the. It's been a much more aggressive Chinese pairing. <laughs> Tremendous badminton, highest quality. Yeah, lovely rally um, Nine, with, with uh, a lot of transitions between offense and defense. But but the key play in this rally again is this cover by uh, Higashino, where she's anticipating that Xing Wei will go cross court with his backhand drive, and uh, then she she can intercept it. Players are working at Nine, such a tempo. 15. They're just having a little cool off here, just a towel dry, grip, a little bit dry if they can. When I say towel, it's been towel, no drinking. Oh, towel only, Nine, no drink allowed. 15. Yeah, there are there are different kinds of breaks you could say uh, sometimes or. If the court is wiped, then uh, you can go and do anything as, as long as you are. So it's over. You're ready when when the, the court is ready, so to speak. But uh, sometimes 16, you're, you're allowed nine. to go for a quick towel. Uh, that is just to ensure that, that you can still hold the racket. Um, you can just uh, towel off the perspiration of your hands. But uh, then you have to be quick. Well played, so Yuta Watanabe. 10, 16. Yeah, and that's because uh, Higashino has been so successful in covering uh, the cross-court shots from, from this situation. Then Watanabe can, can focus on covering uh, the other side as he did here. No, he so doesn't over. make it this time. It's a quite a difficult shot that the, the shuttle was so low. Cross court with it. Yeah, that's the key, Alan. That that uh, Chen Qing Cheng is, is uh, meets the shot is higher at the net now, and and uh, that means that Higashino is, is not so dominant in the front court any longer. <laughs> Watanabe, he 11, celebrates 17, his smash winner. Just have to wipe the court here for a moment because. Uh, 
Jane Siwei went down on the court. A little bit of perspiration on the court, and anything has to be mopped up, dried. Exactly, otherwise it's dangerous for the players. Super Series titles Eleven. between them, the Chinese. 17. They won the Malaysia Open this year. What the Japanese can do here now. 11 17, they're trailing. Again, she's so busy at the at the net in the front court. Okay. Yeah, she is Irish uh, Higashino, and and 12, you can only be impressed 17. by by the way she's moving all the time, constantly looking for for the chance of making interceptions like this one, where she can uh, gain the initiative and and put it below the the height of the net and on the opponent's side. Doubles, but especially in uh, in this mixed doubles match, the, the service situation is so important because whoever 18, comes 12. out on top after the first four or six shots uh, is very very likely to win the rally. Oh, oh, that's a tremendously directed smash from Watanabe. 18. Yeah, and I think soon we will see the the, um, the deceptive drop shot, uh, the stop drop from Watanabe, and if he gets more of these uh, attacking situations, because he, he has a, a, a very, very beautiful uh, drop shot. from China's Chen Ching Chen. And they're edging closer to 19, taking this second 19. game. Yeah, and being a, a very, very competent ladies doubles or women's doubles player as well. Ching 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 doesn't mind taking up the hard 19. work in the back door. Absolutely on fire. Yeah, they're very energetic player. It's game point for China. Set over. Just out. 14, 20. Strongly, as you would expect, with their world Second ranking game, number one in the world China, in the mixed doubles. 21, 14, 21 14, they take the second game, and this opening mixed doubles is level. We're going to a decider.
20 seconds. 20 seconds. Well, lots of instructions to both teams. Energetic, animated discussions between the coaches and the players. China have come back strongly. It's one game all. This third game to decide the mixed doubles in this semi final between China and Japan. It's wide. And, and as I said in, in the opening game, uh, I feel the same goes here that, that the Japanese pair will need a good start here because otherwise the, the Chinese pair will be too confident and. Uh, uh, and probably run away from them point wise. Straight at the feet of Higashino. Yeah, and like in the second game, it, it seems like uh, Chen Quin Cheng has, has taken over the reign of, of, of the front court and. Uh, the, the Japanese and, and especially Higashino has to uh, to take up the battle once again to, to win it back. Which he does here successfully. Yeah, that's what she was doing so well in the first game. Yeah, and, and that's a key in key in this match because uh, the Japanese pair is not going to win the match uh, from from making lots of lifts. They they need to be on the offense. Well played, Watanabe. Two more. And here Watanabe meets the shot uh, early in the front court, and that means that he can push Zheng uh, Ziwei uh, fast sideways. And Zheng Ziwei, Zheng Ziwei, China, don't push, don't push shot. No. Not sure what that was, Lars. Uh, but I, I'm sure the uh, umpire Henrik Boas uh, has noticed that Jing Wei was squeezing the shuttle a bit, uh, maybe in order to uh, to get it changed, and, and that is definitely not allowed. And I think he is, he will be happy that that he didn't get a get a warning. Get a yellow card for this. Three all. That's where she's been so good. Arisa Higashino. When she comes forward to the net. Yeah, exactly. And Watanabe has Four, moved forward three. as well, and and that means that that uh, it's more likely that that they can get on to uh, to the offense, uh, which they they so desperately need. so well they did a lot of hard work japan in that point and and brilliant uh, smash returns from from both uh, male players in, in this rally this is a very good save good control by watanabe and, and before that we saw uh, jeng ziwei with a beautiful uh, cross court smash return uh, pushing watanabe to to the deep forehand corner third game of this mixed doubles Thank match you. and it's four points all Look, isn't it? 
Yeah, it is, and you can almost sense that, that the players know that that um, this match is, is likely to uh, to be won now. That like if either side gets a run of points now, that will give them so much confidence that it'll be hard to uh, uh, hard to catch up again. So uh, so even though it's, the score is only five four, then it's the points right now are very important. Tremendous play. Pigasino again fires the shuttle straight at her. Yeah, Chen Ching Chen. Again, she moves out to one side um, to cover this this flat drive from uh, Cheng Shui, which normally would be a good shot, but but uh, if she, had she been standing in the in the center of the court. Oh, that's a uh, he'll be disappointed with himself there, Watanabe, because he uh, he had anticipated the, the straight drive from uh, Jing Shiwei, and, and there was actually, a, from this one, there was actually a good opening cross court, uh, but just mishit it. China leading 6 5 in this third game. Jing Shiwei with serve. Doesn't make it. Six. Oh. No, and I, I think it's well, very well played by the Japanese that, that they play Jing Zhiwei in, in both sides now, whereas in the second game they were going very much for his backhand side, and, and then it's too easy to anticipate uh, that the shots, most of the shots are coming there. So uh, they've been successful moving him sideways uh, in this third game. Big smash from the Japanese player, Yuta Watanabe. And very good uh, defensive control from uh, Arisha Higashima. And again, Six. immediately when the shuttle is below the tape, she is rushing to the net, uh, which makes it impossible for Jing Shiwei to, to play the block. And then he has to lift to Watanabe, who can finish it off. Side of China's Jin Ti Wei. Umpire says we'll carry on with this shuttle. Jin Ti Jin wanted it changed. Japan just edge ahead, 8 6. Good return here by Zheng Shiwei. Attacks the serve, the low serve, and hits the or deflects the, the top of the tape, and it's unreachable. Hi. Hi. Oh. Nine, seven. Yeah, but but I, I I'm pretty sure the the nerve starts creeping in again, especially on the Chinese. They don't like that the Japanese are, are with them or even ahead, points wise. Well played, Higashino kept Japan in the point. Yeah, and we could Ten, see how much the, the, the Chinese pair grew in the second game when they got ahead with uh, three or four points, and and then Cheng Shiwei didn't make a shot like this or miss a shot like this in, in the second game. So it's very important for the Japanese that uh, that they stay in front. Uh, that's pretty obvious, but but uh, in order to keep the pressure on on the uh, Chinese. Fault. Japan, Japan, fault. 
things that uh, Arisha Hikashino is uh, either touching the net or over the net when she when she hits the shot. The umpire said over the net, but the racket of Hikashino is it was over the net? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the in the last kill at the net. We'll have a look Watch at the replay. It was. I, I think that is a very good call. It's, it's still on the, on the pictures. It's very hard to see, but uh, but I think it it, uh, it justifies the call by uh, Henry Gores. And he's not going to change the decision, so uh, they might as well focus on the next rally and, and play on. She was so eager to win the point. She saw an open space for the winner. But there's, there's a big difference now, and the Chinese will be very happy about this because uh, and a, a four-point margin, 11-7, uh, wouldn't have been nice for them. Kept out the one smash, couldn't keep out the second. No, and, and Zheng Xiuwei is signalling to uh, to his coaches Nine. that uh, it was on purpose that he, he uh, placed this last smash higher, so actually, uh, yeah, almost going for, for the throat of, of uh, Higoshima, and she was surprised by it. Out. But there's a big difference between um, changing ends here on 11-9 on or 11-7 had it been uh, if, if uh, they had won this, this uh, rally. And we can see that uh, Korean head coach uh, Park yo Pong is, is uh, still discussing with, uh, with the umpire as he makes his way across the court. Still having a word. She's still. Or she is that about serve? I think it's about who's going to serve. But it was a marginal call. But the umpire was absolutely right. But it is Japan who are leading 11-9. And it seems like he, he's, he's not really convinced what he should do in this situation when, when they play his, uh, his backhand at the midcourt uh, or drives it to, uh, to his backhand side in, in the deep corner. It's a good leave by Watanabe. Watch the shuttle all the way. And a very clever variation Nine. of serve from, uh, from Higashino. Serving it out uh, wider than she usually does towards uh, Chinquen's uh, right shoulder. You can see how Zheng Ziwei is just aiming everything at Tigashino. Yeah, and, and especially when, when the lift is this short, you can see. Uh, He's not, his, his right foot is not even between the tram lines, and, and then he wants to attack uh, the, the, the female player uh, hard. That's, that's very common in, in mixed doubles. Yes, that's, that has been her trademark throughout this match. Yeah, but that was exactly the situation where in the second game she got a little bit too eager and wanted to, to uh, kill the shuttle from this situation. Now she just finds the gap instead and uh, maybe the Chinese pair can reach it, but, but they are still in control and, and uh, the Chinese would probably have to lift.
brilliant defense. Watanabe. 15, Japan a pump now. And they're leading 15 10. Yeah, and Zheng Xiuwei is, is trying all the shots in his uh, in his toolbox. This one, we didn't see him make it, but that was the one that forced Watanabe to, to make a, a jump. And uh, it was a beautiful deceptive shot from, from the front court. Um, 15, 10. 16, 10. Tang Jin Siwei makes another error. 16, 10 to the Japanese mixed doubles pairing. These Japanese with a mixed doubles ranking of 22 against the number one ranked team in the world. Ah, that's Watanabe with the error. Yeah, he's going a little bit too much for it, but it, it's a it's a wise, wise move. He has, he has seen that uh, Zheng Xiwei will, will probably make the block, as he's done so many times in uh, in this match. Um, but it's just a little bit too eager. Look how well they combine. Yeah, and the, the, the key to the um, to the Japanese defense is that, that the first lift 17. has the right length. And, and when it has that, then Zheng Xiwei can, cannot put so much pressure on uh, Higoshima. And, and then she's uh, um, she can play her, her counter-attack um, from defense. Whereas when the, lift, the first lift is too short, then she gets under too much pressure and, and Jing Xiuwei gets, gets through. It's out. 18-11. Is there too much for China to catch up here? You would think there is. And, and uh, they seem very tense right now. Zhang Siwei, no error this time. No, and it's not unusual that, that when you get to this 18. point where, which you could say at 11-18 uh, in in the final game, that, that uh, the match seems to to be lost, then uh, then you can actually get rid of your nerves because then then you might as well just play and and then you are actually playing better. Um, and we can hope for, for the Chinese that uh, that will happen. Tremendous rally. Yeah, and then until the last shot, very good control by Watanabe. He's uh, keeping his calm, doing lots of different attacking shots on, on the uh, quality lifts from uh, the Chinese pair. 42 shots that rally. It's two points salvaged and hard worked for by China. It was 18-11, 18-13. Now it is that look of fierce determination on the face of Chen Chen. 13, 19 years of age. 18. She's been fist pumping, running around the court. But it's uh, serious right now. At 18, 13. She has served. 13, 18. Mistake from Chen. Yeah, and I think the shot from uh, from Arisha Higashino just uh, deflects the net, and, and that's why it's, it's jumping past. We can maybe watch it here. Jumping past uh, King Ching's racket. Yeah. And again, the vital battle between the pe female players uh, in and around the net. 
That's what we've seen throughout the match. Played by uh, Zheng Xiwei, that he's ready to to come forward and and assist uh, his female partner in in the front 14, court play. 19. This is so tense, so tight. 14-19 in the deciding game. saves in, in this rally on, on both sides. Um, 15, 19. First by Higashima in, in defense and, and then by uh, Zheng Xiwei after Higashima has played a very, very tight net shot, but he's uh, spinning it back uh, and keeps the Chinese pair uh, in this match. 15-19. Point to Japan, and they now have match point. Match point. Yeah, Watanabe takes the chance. Is, is going 100% for for the low serve. Um, had Cheng Shui flick served that one, uh, I'm not sure he would have been able to reach it. A good choice. Nagashima pushes it wide. She's made so few errors in this entire match. Maybe a little eager to try and get the winner there. Still match point. Oh, yeah, well played. Brilliant, isn't it? 17. 20. But I think it's throughout the entire match, I, I think it's only the second time I can remember that they didn't cover this a cross court shot from uh, Jing Xiwei's backhand. Uh, and this one is played softer than, than most of them, but a beautiful shot. I will see if Watanabe dares to, uh, to go 100% uh, on the low serve. 17 uh, 20. Chen Kun Cheng could. Could uh, be the one who, who would choose the flick serve now. a very good lift 18, after a, a very 20. tight block. Japan. Chen manages to keep the pressure on Higoshima and, and this time she cannot play cross court, which she, she so desperately wants because she knows that's where the gap is. 31 shot rally on match point and it's still a match point. string has gone again for Watanabe. It's so tense. Indeed it is, and, and right now the, the, the Chinese pair are, are playing at their highest level. Uh, and I think actually Watanabe does well in this rally. Keeps his calm in the attack, playing a lot of his uh, stop drops, uh, building up, hoping to get a a, a, a better or improve his uh, his attacking position, but 19, the quality of the lift is, is just too good. Uh, and then he ends up making the unfortunate uh, mistake. 
a lot of pressure on the, on the yeah, serve here. That's an Play. 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 Japan celebrate. Japan have caused an upset here in this semi final. With the world ranking of 22, they've beaten the world number one mixed doubles pairing from China. What a massive win that is. Yuta Watanabe at 19 years of age with the 20 year old Arisa Higashino. And amazing scenes here as Japan strike first in this semi-final with a dramatic win. This is the moment that they knew they had done it. One by Japan, 21-12, 14-21, That final game, it was so tense. China will be utterly disappointed with that performance. They would have looked at that and thought, we've got this one, look at our ranking, look at our record. But it's Japan who caused an upset. Japan take it, 21-12, 14-21, 21-19 in the mixed doubles. It's the Gold Coast, Australia, in the state of Queensland, and it's surfers' paradise. And when you go inland into the hinterland, it's the magnificent scenery that you'll see. Spend a lot of time outdoors and just come and see the, the wonders of the beauty of the Gold Coast. There's so much to do, so much to be entertained by in the Gold Coast of Australia.
But what a shock that is as the mixed doubles go to Japan. First blood to Japan in this semi-final. Brilliant it was to watch. So tense there on court. And now China will be looking to their tremendously gifted singles man, Lin Dan, two-time Olympic champion against Kenta Nishimoto, 22 years of age. He's 11 years younger than the Chinese man. Lin Dan. He has been on top of the world. He is the Olympic champion in Beijing in 2008, in London in 2012. Five-time world champion, six-time All-England champion. He's got more gold medals than the Bank of England. And his opponent is Kenta Nishimoto. He has a world ranking of 61. His best was 40 last year. And his CV is a particularly short one when you compare it with Lin Dan. He did reach the final of the 2013 Russian Open, which was a BWF Grand Prix event. He was beaten by Vladimir Ivanov of Russia. Lin Dan, you would think for China, Lars would have too much here experience. Uh, we, we must expect that, and, and in, a, in a crucial match like uh, like this one, uh, I think you would you would rather face uh, anybody in the world than, than Lin Dan uh, with his experience and, and his qualities. So. Uh, Everything uh, points in the direction of, uh, of a Chinese win in, in this particular match. Satyawan Mahadu from Mauritius is the uh, umpire for this men's singles match. And Trish Grubb of New Zealand is the service judge. He's 33 now, Lin Dan. The uh, wonderfully gifted left-handed Chinese, former world number one from Fujian in China. He's played in five Sudaman Cup events. This is his sixth. He's got 64 career titles. And of course, he reached the pinnacle in the Olympics in uh, Beijing and London. He's only played once against Chinese Taipei. It took him 35 minutes to come past Yu Hun. Well, he's world ranked nine now. Uh, the uh, younger man, Kenta Nishimoto, the world ranking of 61, has reached uh, number 40 in the world. But he knows the size of his task here tonight. Just uh, lost against Lee Chong Wei. Nearly lost against Mark Zeber of Germany. Mark Zeber is probably Germany's best ever singles player. Uh, at least a men's singles player. Um, They've, they've had a couple of, of uh, very strong uh, women singles players, uh, Su Hoi Wen and, and Juliane Schenk as well. Um, but if we stick to men singles, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> so Kenta Nishimoto has had a couple of outings on court, but he hasn't managed to win, and now he faces the mighty Lin Dan. Don't forget, Lin Dan didn't play against India in the quarterfinal. Chen Long played. But play. So this is a, an entirely new selection for China. Every player who's playing in this semi-final. Here we go, the men's singles. Lin Dan against Kenta Nishimoto. But you can also add that it's, it's not an easy task for, for the Chinese coaches to pick between Ladies Lin Dan and, and, and Chen Long. Uh, on my right, I would have difficulties uh, choosing who, who I by Lin Dan. And on my left, 
Japan, represented by Kenta Nishimoto. China to serve, love all, play. Exactly what kind of strategy to adopt here. He's one of the most experienced men of all time. 33 years of age, all that Olympic experience, world championship experience, Sudaman Cup experience. Yeah, and I presume we'll see Linden as he normally does. He, he will uh, spend some rallies now uh, becoming uh, totally acquainted with the court and the conditions uh, here tonight. Um, Although it's the same, same arena, then uh, the conditions might not be exactly the same uh, every day. Um. And then later on, he will start playing more for points and, and obviously still try to win this uh, first game. He'll survey the geography of the court, will he? Yeah, and. Uh, uh, the conditions of, of the, the draft. Just wide, just out from Nishimoto. 11 years younger than the Chinese man. Might count for something. And it, Nishimoto, he, he needs uh, to win some points here in in the beginning of the first game uh, in order to, to believe that this is at all possible. Uh, he, he hasn't won a, a match yet in uh, in this year's Sudirman Cup and uh, and then facing Lim Dan, is, uh, it must be very difficult to uh, to convince himself that, uh, that it's going to happen tonight. Challenges, China challenges called in. Challenge from a uh, Chinese man. Call was in. And Lindan seems pretty confident that uh, his challenge will be successful. Close. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. So it's over. Three. Oh. Front court here by Nishimoto. Uh, he plays a net drop from a little bit far away and uh, puts it, gives it the exact right amount of, of speed and, and puts it on the on top of the net actually. Nishimoto, which uh, 
Lindan did well to retrieve. Yeah, exactly. And Lindan ends up after he retrieves this one. Uh, he ends up with a quite good uh, attacking opportunity here in his round ahead, but uh, mistimes it a little bit. Um, He looks to be playing Lars. He looks to be sort of just tentative a little bit. Does it just see? I know you made the point that he's Five, getting three. used to the conditions, but he's he's not overexerting himself right now. No, no, and and uh, he's very uh, very economical about uh, spending his energy right. Um, and right now, uh, Nishimoto is is definitely spending more uh, more energy than than Linda. Because he knows that he can pull out of the bag something special like that. Yeah, and, and uh, he's, he's getting used to the conditions, but it's also the first time he plays Nishimoto, and, and obviously he has been watching him on, him on, on video, but still it's, it's not the same as, as standing in front of him. So, so uh, he has to get used to the rhythm of, of play from, uh, from Nishimoto and, and just see his shots live. Uh, Fist from Lindan as uh, Nishimoto fails to clear the net. Five, oh. He didn't play in the quarter final win over India, Lindan, but uh, Chen Long played. In fact, the, uh, the entire Chinese team has changed for this semi final. Goal. backhand touch from Lindan. Yeah, and, and we can we can see here in this rally uh, one of uh, Lindan's Five. biggest strengths, and that is not giving the opponent good attacking opportunities. This one looks like a good opportunity, the first one, but Lindan is in perfect control, and he knows where the attack is, is probably going to come. And after that, Nishimoto doesn't have the slightest chance of killing the shuttle. Um, throughout the the rest of the rally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Nishimoto just for a moment just raised his racket. To, sorry. Yeah, because the, the Nishimoto's uh, smash return was going wide uh, until it, it hit the, the, the top of the net uh, and that deflected it a little bit inwards and, and then it stayed in. You see here, it's clearly going wide, uh, but this touch uh, just pushes it back in, and, and that was very fortunate. Well, that's what you might call an unforced error from the Chinese. Now he's world number nine. Of course, he was world number one, two-time Olympic champion. Japanese man who's uh, got a world ranking of 61. Yeah, you could say that, Alan, but I'm not sure it's good enough. <laughs> uh, the, the problem is we, we, we must expect that uh, Lindan is, is getting very well used to the conditions and, and can raise, his, uh, raise the quality of his game when we go toward the, uh, the end of this first game. Um, so I reckon that uh, Nishimoto needs uh, needs a, a few points lead um, when we get past 15 uh, to have a chance to, to win the, the game. So it's over. A little sort of half-block defence from Lindan. 
Yeah. So delicate. And sexy. He's got a great touch, hasn't he? Oh, great touch and foul when he wants it. And the problem is that, that uh, Nishimoto has played uh, like the top of his game to uh, to get here to uh, to eight nine and and uh, I have a feeling that that Linden has at least uh, one more gear that he hasn't used yet. And he's moving by stealth and experience. Challenge. Linda challenges called in. Shuttle called in. And it's the second challenge in this uh, opening game from Lindan of China. Yeah, and if he's not successful this time, then uh, he, he has lost the opportunity to challenge for, for the rest of this uh, first game. But let's see. And the second time he's been wrong. Successful. No challenge in the end. So it's over. Nine, ten. So no more challenges for Lindan. Just caressed it over. With yeah. a forehand across the net, and at the interval, so it is China's Lin Dan who leads 11-9. Yeah. play at the same tempo, he's playing well within himself physically. He's just making Nishimoto work hard with that intricate net play. Yeah, great skills at the net, very deceptive well, and with good quality. Uh, And that just puts uh, Nishimoto so much out of balance that he's, he's making his lift wide. We could also notice the, the different styles in coaching in this mid-game interval, where Xia Suan from, uh, from China, the Chinese uh, uh, men's singles coach, he was having a sort of a discussion with Lin Dan, which is normal with uh, with um, experienced players, whereas the, the Japanese coaches, uh, head coach Park Yupong and, uh, and singles coach uh, Yusuke uh, Nakanishi, they, they were telling uh, Nishimoto a little bit more what, what they wanted him to do. touch here from from Lindan he's quite low in in defense there and, and still he manages to uh, to put the shuttle on on top of uh, the, the net tape That's 
at speed, Nishimoto coming to the net to make the winner. Yeah, and, and I think that's very well played by uh, by Nishimoto, and, and um, that's what he should try to do more, uh, however difficult it may be. But but this, see here, he changes the speed, attacks, and then follows up. And and if Lindan returns his push from the net, then he should go back and, and play at a little bit lower speed again, uh, and looking for another opportunity to uh, to make a, a change of pace. Just out from Lindan, he's trying to create angles with deft touches. Yeah, and all credit to, to Nishimoto, he's, he's really working hard now and in, in order to try to, to stay uh, in touch in, in this first game. And, uh, he has been giving a, a, a few um, forced or unforced errors by by Linden, which is uh, quite unusual um, after the mid-game interval here, and, and he'll be very happy about that. and then getting ready for the next shot, the smash winner. Uh, it's almost a trademark counter-attack here from Linden. Watch how he's in control, even though he's, he's on the floor. Um, and then he, he recovers quickly and, and is ready to do a, um, a, a very well-placed attack uh, afterwards. He's pushed it wide. So he's over. Fourteen. Oh. Nishimoto is doing well to stick with him. 14 points all in this opening game of the men's singles. Yeah, and he's, he's uh, also succeeding in, in making Linden work more than, than he did in the, in the beginning of the, of the game. In. A lot of hard work there for Nishimoto. Well, a lot of hard work for both players, but it was you always felt that the Chinese man was in control. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, very good control in this match. Slightly sliced and, and definitely not hit with, with full power, but with uh, great accuracy. Yeah, 
And Nishimoto is, is playing with great confidence here. A good disguise there. Um, giving it a, even though he hits it very quickly with short movement, he's giving it a, a little bit of extra height that, uh, that fools them then. Pushed it. Yeah, it's a great build up in this rally, and, and he builds up to a, a good chance for a push and, and a win at the net, but, but overdoes it. 16, a little bit 15. too eager, maybe, or, or a little bit too much out of balance, and it just goes wide. It's just so impressive how Lin Dan makes those retrieves from his backhand. Yeah, exactly. It's virtually on the floor when he's playing it, and yet he's up like a coiled spring, and he's ready for the next shot. I guess Olympic champions do that. <laughs> and that's out. Well, it's certainly not a one-way traffic uh, match that many might have thought. Lindan with a ranking of nine. Nishimoto with a ranking of 61. There, Lindan, and he's annoyed with himself for that. Yeah, he is. That's that's uh, a too easy mistake. Uh, I'm sure he, he thinks uh, to make, but again, a very very uh, well played point by uh, by Nishimoto. Um, but um, after having played again, great defence, um, Lindan, he felt that that he got a. Got a good attacking opportunity again after 16, counter attack. Doesn't make it, Lindan. No, and again, great action from Nishimoto. Um, great defense in, in the backhand on, on the straight slice from, from Lindan. And, and again, after that, great control in the net. Both players working extremely hard, and it's, uh, it's energy sapping, and it's warm, sweating profusely, both of them. Lindan is still not feeling uh, perfectly comfortable on court. Uh, again, uh, uh, an unusual uh, mistake, um, especially so late in, in the game. Oh, that's just out. Yeah, and great anticip anticipation by Nishimoto. So he, uh, he knows that Linden uh, is likely to do the shot from here. Waits for it and just barely misses it. Eight 
17 all. Well, this time, a slight change of tactic from Dindan as he rushes the net to make the winner. Yeah, exactly. He, instead of trying to make a winner from, uh, from the smash, the first smash, then... He hits it, so he knows that Nishimoto is very likely to to receive it, but uh, but then he's ready to to kill the next one. Oh, that's it! Nishimoto is flat out on the court, and Lin Dan has got a clenched fist as he looks towards his coaches. He's now got a game point. Game point. Yeah, and, and he has been waiting, doing this cross-court attack, saved it for when he needed it, has done a lot of straight attacking from the backhand corner, and, and now when we are close to, to the end of the game, then... Uh, then he uses the shot for the first time. Very clever. Well, he's got a game point here. Just wonder whether... Well, what I, we don't know, obviously, the outcome of this. You'd think he might win this first, but what would his tactic be for the second game? Brilliant from Nishimoto. He stayed with Lindan all the way through that rally. And that's taken a bit out of Lindan as well, physically. Yeah, and I think actually that, that wry smile from Lindan is, is actually an acknowledgement that his opponent played very well in this rally. Both players managing to, for a long time, to, to keep the opponent away from, from attacking uh, opportunities. But finally, Nishimoto played a, a brilliant shot at the net that forced him then to, to lift passively, and, and then he can finish it with a cross-court slice on the line. <laughs> Nothing else, it's a few moments just to recover. 36 shots that last rally. Nishimoto would serve here, but it's still a, a game point for Lindan. This is wide. Lindan comes through the first game. And it was a, an examination for Lindan as, as much for Nishimoto. Brilliant cat and mouse badminton. 28 minutes, Lindan takes the first game 21 
just wonder now, Lars, what kind of strategy will Lin Dan play the same kind of strategy that he did in that first game? I, I believe he will. Uh, he will probably just get used to the conditions. You can see here he's just stealing a lift, you could say, uh, before the, the game has started. Just checking the conditions in, in the round the head corner. Of Second the game, love all, play. Second game then, here we go. Pushed it out, just a shade too long. Sansova, one, left. And for, for Nishimoto, I, I think uh, he should stick to, to his tactics. That was, even though he didn't win the game very successful in, in the first game, especially after the beginning where I think he, he was a little bit too eager, uh, like this. Playing, playing the shuttle around the court, moving Lindan patiently, and then uh, making these uh, changes of pace and, and surprise attacks uh, that he did so successfully in the first game. Like we see it here. And it's nice to see how he, he's making his uh, his speed changes here. In, in the previous rally, it was primarily through his footwork. In this one, it's, it's the forearm here. Lindan doesn't expect an attack because he's in a, a little bit uh, low position in the round the head corner, but uh, he makes the cross-court attack for a strong. This time he comes in at pace. Four, low. It's fall up in this second game. Yeah, and a, a, a very good opening by uh, Nishimoto. Challenge. Japan challenges. Ball out. Quick call by the uh, line judge who said it was out. And it was a quick challenge from Nishimoto of Japan, who believes that this is in. I'm afraid it's out. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. So it's over. One, four. Bit of adrenaline pumping there, I think, for Nishimoto. Yeah, I think maybe he was disappointed with himself that he hit it out <laughs> because it, it was a good opportunity. Oh, yeah. beautiful skills again at the net from Lindan. This guy's the spinning net drop here. Four. Nishimoto believes he's, he's going for a flat drive or, or lift. in the front court by Lindan just angling it cross court here two great pickups Side though. Four, four. 
now, and then Dan has decided that, that uh, Nishimoto was, was too much in control in, in the first rallies of uh, this second game and, and has uh, uh, changed the speed of his own game and, and is much more uh, aggressive now than, uh, than he was in, in the opening rallies. That's another one of, of Lindan's strengths that, that he can change the tactics uh, so many times and, and can play in, in various ways. Uh, so it's hard for the opponent to, to get the rhythm and to anticipate what's going to happen. Well, that's something special from Lindan. We haven't seen too much by way of the smash from him in this match. It's over. Five, no, and from winning four, four love now, uh, Nishimoto is, uh, has lost five in a row and. and the trouble is, is on his side of, of the net. But as he has shown several times also throughout the first game, he's he's ready to fight back and and, and give it all today. And if you shouldn't do it in a, in a Sudiman Cup uh, semi-final, then I don't know when you should uh, give it all. Uh, that's wide from Lindan. Six, five. Deal was right. Yeah, and the gap was there. Uh, just didn't didn't put it in the right spot. So it's over. Just feel that he's Six. being a little bit more oh. offensive, a bit more aggressive in this second game. Exactly. And especially after he was down for love. Gets out of balance Seven. because the, the cross court drop shot from Nishimoto just uh, deflects the, the tape of the net here and thus is, is becoming shorter than what you would expect. But yeah, and he just makes this extra stretch and he's actually not that far away from, from making a quite good cross court net shot. But uh, that proved to be too difficult, even for him. Well, as we saw in the first game, there was very little in it until they got to about 16, 17 points. And it's uh, Nishimoto who leads here, 7-6. Seven, 7-6. Six. Seven, six. Seem odd that that he all of a sudden is from a like situation with with not so much pressure on is making a mistake. But that's because his quality has to be so good all the time, Nishimoto. Because otherwise, Linden will will finish the rally uh, with his attack. Oh, that's a mistake from Kenta uh, Nishimoto. And it could be a sign that that he's. He's maybe getting a little bit tired because normally he would uh, he would reach this uh, this push and, and put it over the net. Time is over. 
by both players. Yeah, great, great fight here, and, and all credit to uh, to Kenton Ishinoto. He's uh, really playing well. But again, I have this feeling that that physically he's uh, he's at his limit, and and maybe starting to feel a bit fatigued, and and Linden. Uh, will be able to at least keep this this tempo um, for quite a while. a winner you'll have to tell me last how that shuttle hit the floor because it yeah and that was after the, the the first attack was actually quite competent as well but lindan just plays a, a long lift uh, over him smash return but this time he's uh, slicing it nishimoto and uh, and that surprises lindan it takes the speed out of the shuttle and and it ends up shorter than a, a clean smash would do Good choice by Nishimoto. Oh yeah, and he'll be very happy with this one, Nishimoto. His, his string was broken and... Uh, I don't think Lindan had, had realized because... Uh, then he, he probably wouldn't have, have taken the risk of, uh, of making this attacking shot. Very fortunate that that your opponent makes a mistake when when you have broken the string. It's not impossible to continue to rally with with one broken string, um, but you just can't rely on 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 your racket anymore. And, and there's a big uh, a big big chance of or big risk of, of making a mistake. Is that on the line? No, it's just it's just, just out. It's just wide. So at the interval in this second game, it is uh, Nishimoto who leads 11-9. Just wonder 
whether last spell we'll see possibly a slight change in, in strategy and from Linda and now from the interval here. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that, that he wants to at least get back uh, level points-wise. Uh, he doesn't want to uh, to let, uh, if, if he can avoid it, let Nishimoto uh, run away um, with a bigger lead than, than the two points he, he had in, during the interval. Um, of course, there are two players deciding that, so Nishimoto will, will try to make it hard for him. It's the mistake from Lindan. It's just the calmness with which he deals with everything that comes over the net from the Japanese man. Yeah, and it's it's actually encouraging for, for Nishimoto. Had, had, had he lost this rally, it, it would be very tough for him because he was working so hard. Um, but, but it's encouraging for him to see that Lindan still makes mistakes and uh, so he doesn't have to open his defense every time in order to, uh, to win a point. In his mind, he almost feels as if he knows the strategy like a, like a, a chess master. You know, he's almost working three shots ahead of himself. Yeah, but, but badminton is a, is a game of chess. Uh, it's, it's just... Uh, um, you're just working with, uh, with a higher heartbeat, I would say. Um, you have to work physically very hard uh, at the same time as you are playing chess. Yes, yeah. and, and then the physical physical tiredness translates into a mental tiredness, doesn't it? But yeah, it, that's yes. why great champions like Lin Dan, he's playing well within himself. He does have a mental strength and toughness. And when you're physically and mentally tired, then you're a worse uh, chess player. <laughs> here for Nishimoto, who plays so well, and Lindan in his lift, it just touches the, the top of the net, and, and see this one, and then Nishimoto is already rushing to the back, and, and uh, the timing is totally off in, in this last shot. It's an amazing recovery. challenge from Nishimoto and I'm afraid it's the same case as we saw earlier when he challenged one of his attacking shots that he hopes so much that that it's in and, and he has played so well that maybe you could even say that he deserved it but but uh, I'm afraid it, it was wide but uh, we'll see what Hawkeye says this could mean so much for the the way this uh, second game will be played because Worked his socks off there, Nishimoto. There's no, no shuttle in this <laughs> picture, so that was well, that's, got, that's got us all fooled, that one. <laughs> Again, these, these astounding pickups from Lindan, and, and he recovers so well to play the next shot. It, it's a fantastic study to watch him, this great athlete. Right, here we go. Has it touched the line? Oh, oh, great call by the line judge. It is out. You, you can understand in the heat of the moment why Nishimoto challenged. I can perfectly understand him <laughs> because he played so well in the rally. But it means that Lindan now has a two-point lead, 14-12. Is 
wide and he berates himself for it. Yeah, and he's still not comfortable with this shot. Uh, the cross court slice from his forehand is the, the third uh, time he hits it wide and in, in this game and, and not just wide, they are quite far uh, wide still. So uh, he'll, he'll be unhappy with that. Great deception. Just for a second, Nishimoto stayed back, maybe on the on the heels of his feet. Yeah, and, and of course he also knows that Lindan has a little bit of a bad feeling about the cross court smash. Uh, but Lindan knows that he has to he has to attack in both sides, and, and then he chooses to do this a little bit softer, still sliced shot uh, cross court, and and that takes him by surprise. Again, very shows great experience here. Well, he got into a bit of a tangle with his feet, which is... Very uncharacteristic of Lindan. What, what, look at his footwork here. Oh, feet were just all over the place, weren't they? Yeah, but he, his shoe just uh, yeah, catches a grip of, of, uh, of the floor mat there. And, and just this, this, I mean, the slightest destruction there is... is um, or distraction, sorry, is, is is just putting him so much out of balance. Tight call here again. Does he want to challenge it in that? Oh, the call was in, so... And Nishimoto doesn't have any any more challenges. He's just puffing hard there, Nishimoto. There's one again. He's up straight away. Yeah, he's he's very low, lying on the floor, but still recovers so quickly and he's ready to play on afterwards. And then this slight, uh, slight sliced attack towards uh, straight down the line towards Nishimoto's uh, backhand has given Lindan a, a lot of points today. the kill here now he's I think he knows that his opponent has just about given everything yeah he knows that can can he make these speed changes uh, now then it'll be very tough for, for Nishimoto to follow him uh, I, I just have a feeling as well that Nishimoto is trying to is just trying to gain any seconds here of recovery time. Yeah, he is. He, he, he wants the floor wipe, and uh, the umpire tells him to, to play on. So 18-14. Well, oh, that's in. But he's not finished yet. Nishimoto, this has been a, 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 a tremendously brave challenge to the great man Lindan. Exactly. And and uh, the few extra seconds he, he managed to, to squeeze out of, of the break between the rallies uh, seemed to do him good and, and he made a great uh, a great attacking shot there. All these seconds are so precious for the person who's in oxygen debt and he is 
just help you just to recover, just to calm for a moment. Oh, big mistake. Big mistake when your opponent is three points ahead of you heading towards the match point. 1915, that was a big error from Nishimoto. Yeah, and it was, and, and the position was not as, as perfect as it was in, in the previous rally, uh, and that's probably why he overdoes it. the shuffle out of court. Yeah, he knows this, this shot from Nishimoto is long and, and just watches it and probably is enjoying it whilst he's doing it. It's just so pleasing on the eye the way that Lindan plays his badminton match point. made the recovery he knows how hard he works to recover still a match point yeah and he has to take take small risks uh, in the rallies because otherwise uh, Lindan is, is too comfortable champion he overcomes the challenge of a tenacious Kenta Nishimoto and China on the board in the men's singles courtesy of Lin Dan this great great champion it's the final point yeah, and whereas a younger player would, would probably have tried to finish that point uh, or the match point earlier then Lin Dan just shows a lot of experience and a lot of patience until he, he sets up himself for these two very skillful drop shots, one in either side. But all credit to uh, Kenta Nishimoto, he, uh, he fought well today and, and uh, he can be proud of, uh, of his performance. So Lin Dan of China, in 58 minutes, wins the men's singles 21-19, 21-60.
the Gold Coast, Australia, where so many good things happen. Enjoy the water, the life on the water, walking on the pristine beaches, just watching the waves. This is a very special part of Australia in the state of Queensland and the hinterland where the scenery is just magnificent. Come to the Gold Coast, spend some time here, enjoy it. Well, it's now one all here in this uh, tremendously absorbing semi-final as Lin Dan takes a close men's singles. And now we move on to the men's doubles where we've got the number three ranked team in the world from China, Li Junhui and Liu Yuchen against Takeshi Kamura and Keigo Sonoda. First up, it's the Chinese team introduced to the crowd here. Li Junhui and Liu Yuchen. the Japanese men's doubles. They have a ranking of five. Takeshi Kamura is the number two player in March. He's now number five with Keigo Sonoda. They won the 2016 Hong Kong Open, which is a BWF Super Series event. And they have three titles, Grand Prix Gold and Grand Prix events. But they're taking on the world number three ranked team from China. Li Junhui, Liu Yuchen. Black. Red. Red? Black. Red. This side? That side? Receive, and who will receive? Li uh, Jujin, receive. Service? Bravo, good. Kego. Kego, thank you. Uh, it's the men's doubles between the number three ranked team in this Suriname Cup from China and the number five team in the world from Japan. Li Junhui, 22 years of age. They were the number one in April, the number one men's doubles team in the world. Liaoning in China is where he was born. Well traveled, and he's tall. He's the tallest man. I think he's probably the tallest. Although I think they'd have to stand next to each other to make that call. Liu Yuchen from Beijing world ranking of three. They won gold at the 2013 World Junior Championships and gold at the 2013 Asian Two Junior Championships. They've only played once, and that was against uh, Thailand, Kedron and Poivre and Akuro, which they won, so they've had little time on court. Their opponents from Japan, Takeshi Kamura, 27 years of age, both the Japanese players are 27, ranking of five, and just in March, just gone, they were the number two team in the world. They won the 2016 Hong Kong Open, a BWF Super Series event. They are, as I say, the number five ranked team. Physically, they are just a shade shorter than the Chinese men. Well, they've been on court in all their previous three matches, and they've won them all. The record stands at 3-2 for the uh, Chinese in the Asia Championships.
So Richard Bramley of New Zealand is the uh, umpire. And uh, Michael Fury Dahl from Norway. Did I say that correctly? Service judge. <laughs> Come on, Lars, correct me. I think he will, he will be okay with that. <laughs> So how do you see this one? Number three from China, number five from Japan. First of all, it's it's a surprising team selection from from the Chinese uh, coaches because uh, I would have expected them to play uh, the other men's doubles pair, Fei uh, Haifeng and uh, Nanjiang, uh, who has a positive head-to-head uh, uh, -head score against the, the Japanese pair. They they have a score of, of uh, three nil, um, but. Um, there could be something wrong with uh, with either of the players, and uh, they definitely have a, a strong pair here today as well. But um, I, I think it's uh, it's a little bit uh, a little bit risky, or I, at least I believe that Japanese would rather play uh, this pair than than the more experienced uh, Chinese men's double. Chinese. Men are very tall. Lee Junghui on the right. Is he a shade taller than Liu Yuchen? There's not much in it. Look like a couple of basketball players standing out there. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, China, represented by Li Junhui, Liu Yuchen. On my left, Japan, represented by Takeshi Kimura, Keigo Sonoda. Japan to serve, Keigo Sonoda, to Lee Yu Chen. Level play. Very, very aggressive opening here from uh, Lee Jun Hu. One love. players here knows the importance of, uh, of this match Four. it's it's uh, to me it's a very open match uh, I see no uh, no favorites here actually um, and uh, their last encounter Six at uh, the Asian Championships uh, I believe uh, the Chinese won 21-18 uh, in, in the Three. third game so um, so that was a tight match as well um, but to the overall tie here uh, can the Japanese come out on top uh, then, then they have a, a good chance in uh, in actually either of uh, of the last two matches. Just long. Steps over. Three. Four. And the pattern we see Four. in this rally, I'm sure we will see a lot Three. that, that uh, Kamura and uh, Sonoda will, will try to play, uh, to try to actually take advantage of, of their less height and, and play a lot of uh, flat drives. Um, where the taller Chinese will, will uh, probably have difficulties in moving the racket as Four. fast. They, they, uh, the Chinese will, will look more for for proper attacking possibilities and, and then they can use their, their hard and steep attack. Yeah. 
That's well played by Takeshi Kamura. Over. Yeah, not not so wise play by Liu Five. Yuchen here. That that Four. he he uh, actually invites to play this flat game, uh, playing flat upwards, and and that's a little bit dangerous um, against uh, today's opponents. It's good defense from Japan. And it's actually a good uh, offensive opportunity the Chinese get, but, but good defense, and, and it finally gets them out of balance. Sonoda serves. Ooh. Just long. It's, uh, That's over. Kamura wearing the Five. sort of long black legged Kamura for Japan. Five. And this is Liu Yuchen with serve. Five. Well, he was at the net, he was there, Kamura. Yeah, and the Chinese, uh, they want to take up the battle in in, uh, in the flat drives here and, and the play in and around the net. And, uh, and they're successful this time. Sonoda with so many good defensive ploys, and then he makes the error himself. Yeah, he will be unhappy with that because it's seven. They make the turnover here, um, get on the offense, and uh, he gets actually a, 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 a quite a good chance in a, in a good position at the net. But I think still there's a lot of tension here and on both sides of the net that. Uh, the players, they, they just have to uh, to work Seven. a little bit more before uh, the initial tension in, in the in the bodies has gone. Oh, yeah. well, flat as the net, but the Seven shuffle over. goes over. Seven all. Shouting going on there. Both it's teams over. are pumped up here, as you'd expect in a semi-final. Seven. Yeah, the, the Japanese uh, pair is always pumped up and always uh, uh, jumping a lot and, and shouting a lot in between rallies. But, but I don't know if it's a good idea for, for the Chinese uh, uh, pair to, to sort of it's join over. in uh, on this because it, it can if you're not used to it. It can wear you out um, if we uh, have to go the full distance in, in three games here. Six over. But especially uh, Lee Junhui uh, from the, the Chinese pair has, has been Eight. very successful in, in attacking the services of the of the Japanese players are very very hard, and uh, they have won some easy points on that. Smash from the back of the court from Sonoda, and that's definitely the favourite position from uh, um, from the Japanese side with, with Kamura at the net and, and Sonoda working very very hard in in the back of the court and. He doesn't mind throwing away a, a lot of smashes. Ah! Doesn't 
do it this time. No, and we can see that the Chinese have prepared for for all of these uh, flat drives from uh, from the no. Japanese pair. Uh, Liu Yujin is, is uh, very uh, ready, anticipating in the in the beginning of the rally, and, and is very low in his legs to cover the, the flat challenge. Eleven nine. That's the interval in this first game in the men's doubles, and it's. Chinese pair after eight minutes who lead 11 9. <laughs> 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Thank you. 11-9. Play. Fireworks on court. The Japanese bearing here. Lots of animated noises. Yeah, and there was a lot of instructions going on in the mid-game interval, but uh, it seems like both pair agree that, that they should keep fighting uh, and uh, finding out who's uh, who's best in uh, in playing the, the flat drives. Into the net by Lee Jun Hui. The error this time from Sonoda. And again, he, he, he plays some. Uh, Brilliant first shot, his, his uh, third shot where he's moving it to the other side of, of the net, but uh, cannot finish it off, uh, playing it too too close to the table of the net. See that, that the Japanese they, they don't mind working hard in, in the backcourt and they know they they cannot smash with the steepness of uh, of a lot of their opponents and uh, uh, but then they just make up for it by by doing more smashes and keeping the pressure. Uh, you can also notice in this rally that that both Chinese players are, are playing blocks to the net, taking the speed out both from the midcourt and, and the front court, and I think that's uh, very wise of them, even though it didn't uh, earn them the point this time. Dancing on hot coals. <laughs> Japanese bear here. It's 13 all in this opening game. Now, well, 
Well played by uh, Liu Yuchen here. First he's making a push on the... Maybe see it here. First he's smashing on the, on the forehand side of uh, Kamura and then he's pushing to his, to his uh, backhand side. Good placement. Now let's uh, just Jeff. shade long. Fifteen. Thirteen. Here she Kamura makes a despairing dive. Can't get there. Sixteen. And I think it's very wise 13. from the Chinese players, and it's a beautiful shot here from uh, Liu Jin uh, that he moves his his upper body in, in order to be able to, to angle the shot uh, out to the forehand side of, of Kimura. And, and you can see that, that both uh, Japanese players, they expect a, a hard push as, as uh, they have played up until now, the, the Chinese in that situation. Very good variation. To Japan. Superb defense from both players. Yeah, it, it is, and, and uh, they finally, yeah, Kamura manages to, to punish that. That uh, the Chinese insists on keep playing flat speed, uh, or flat with speed, uh, instead of using the softer shots um, to the net or even over as we. We haven't 14. seen yet. 16. And when you play this Japanese pair, you have to expect that they, that they return a lot of even very good attacking shots, and and uh, you have to uh, to keep the discipline and and uh, keep attacking with patience. That's out. So much energy in the Japanese men's doubles here. Yeah. 16. Oh. And, and I, I think that the Chinese uh, players have, have forgotten uh, what uh, gave them the, the lead here after the mid-game interval, the, the soft shots to, uh, to the sides uh, at the net. Yeah, well played by uh, Liu Yuqian. Oh! It's called wide, and it's a challenge. China challenges called out. Liu Uchen made the challenge, and I think that's that's maybe more of a tactical challenge to uh, just to have a little bit of a break uh, in order to uh, to talk about what what they should do now uh, to to stop the run of points from uh, Japan because yeah, it seems quite far out from, from challenge where we sit. Unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. <laughs> 17, 16. Wait. Takeshi Kamura serving with Japan 17, 16 ahead. <laughs> and he makes a mistake. Six over. Yeah, and it's, it's uh, maybe a bit of a surprise that he goes for the flick service now after three or four successful low serves. Um,
extraordinary badminton from the Japanese. And from the Chinese, I would add, it's, it's a beautiful rally, lovely to watch. And we can notice how the, the Japanese, they don't like lifting to their opponents, but when they do, they, they make sure that, that the Chinese players, they have to move, so they don't have time to get in position to, to do their power smashing. Players ready. Enjoy the movement here. Japan, 18-17 ahead. Oh, it's right between the two of them. what happens when when the Japanese players are, are unable to play lift where the Chinese players have to move then the, the position is too good like here and, and their attack is, is too strong very well played by uh, Liu Yuchen here he keeps the pressure even though he's a bit out of balance uh, Tremendous return of serve. <laughs> 19. 18. And Yubong Park is, is trying to, uh, to keep his players part of the camp. I'm not sure that he's going to be successful in that. Control this one by Sonoda. I, I think maybe it, 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 it may have gone wide, but still he gets around the shot and can play it a little bit inwards. Um, Game point, Japan. sides of the net here first by the Japanese and then this was this beautiful counter-attacking shot he's actually playing a backhand shot in in his forehand side when the attack comes on his right shoulder leaving her here a lovely shot to play and, and especially in, in this situation where he's so much under pressure Calmness around the court of Lin Dan. It's as if somebody's just, I don't know, injected something into uh, this court. It's amazing energy on both sides. Smashing the ball at the shuttle at Kamura. Yeah, and again, after some. Extraordinary uh, round the head defenses by uh, by Kimura. And we can see they get extra supply of, of rackets here. Well, the Chinese preparing, they hit the, ball, the uh, shuttle with such force. I'm amazed they don't have a, a few more rackets in the collection. There. 
It's a game point for China. Can't do it with the serve. And there's so much pressure on, on the low serves here because both sides are, are rushing in in, in order to try to kill it if it's just slightly, uh, slightly too high. This crowd is behind the Chinese. Another monstrous winner here. And even lying on his back, Kimura, he's still trying to, to uh, return the smash. Thank you. Well, that's uh, an almost Thank you. impossible task. And again, it was the very aggressive return of serve. Uh, that set up the point for, for the Chinese player. Game point for the Chinese. They've done it. Awesome power, those smashes from both players. And an epic first game with the men's doubles. Goes the way of China, 23-21 after 24 electrifying minutes on court. Second game. Level. Play. Absolutely spellbinding first game. And China took it 23 21. And the big boys from China coming out again with all guns blazing. And for the first time, uh, Li Junhui. Uh, playing the flick serve oh, and uh, Sonata. Sonata. No. of course that that surprises uh, Kamura. Variation in, in services here by Legion Hui. Three. Uh, Love. Three different kinds. Uh, Kimura. Very, Kimura. very well done. Kimura. Ready. <laughs> That's unlucky for 
Wilson on a smash just with the uh, net tape. Yeah, and actually, totally, we can see here, totally changes direction. So it's, it's amazing here. He gets his racket on it at all. Japan on the board in this second game. Kimura was not successful the first time he tried to uh, to do the flick serve. Then I, I still think that that the Japanese should should do them more because there is a lot of pressure on the low serves here, uh, and if they don't variate them, then uh, that's not going to change. Uh, these are coming down from a great height. From Lee Junhui, 22 year old. Yeah, and watch here how well they move despite their, their size. Six. One. And we could also hear there was a lot of communication between them during the rally, uh, probably about where they would place the, the attack. The Chinese pair has gained a lot of confidence from from winning this first game. Uh, no Chen, ready, play. Oh. Speed around the court from the Japanese players here. And the block from Li Junhui. This one is, is, uh, becomes too soft, and, and then Sonoda can uh, can punish it at the net. that's coming from the two Chinese players. Predominantly Chinese supporters here for the men in black. And again, a, a very nice rally where the Chinese are made to work very, very hard. And a nice finish here from uh, Liu Yuqian. It's not as easy as it looks. I don't know if it looks easy, but uh, it's... it's A lot of players would make a mistake in, in this situation. Uh, and he keeps the control and he kills the shot with his backhand. Seven. Three.
Yu Chin just finds the net with his five. His shot seven. Japan hanging in here in the second game. Just, yeah, where, where we can see how much uh, Lee Jun Hui yeah. is attacking the serve of uh, oh. players of Sonoda. Players, wait, let. Too much delay. Play. Oh. The umpire wants the players to get ah. ready faster. Oh. And maybe that's what distracted. It's over. Liu Jin. Eight. players are beginning to make uh, a few mistakes here um, and and maybe they can feel the the speed of the game and, and uh, the hard physical work they've had to do um, up until now Again, a very aggressive and, and successful uh, return of serve from Lee Yu Hui. Um, Seven. In, in my mind, uh, the, the Japanese players, they, uh, they should definitely variate their services a little bit more when, the, when they're serving, especially to him. Yeah, that looked a little bit funny. I don't know why he's... Nine. Mistiming this one completely. Second game, it is China after 13 minutes who are leading 11 8.
coaches Rayoni Meineke and uh, Park Bon had uh, a lot of instructions again here. 11, 8. Let's see if the Japanese players can convert it into play points. quite a lot and still he can hit the, the last shell of the rally. Thirteen. Eight. Five points now separate the two teams here in this men's doubles. Pushes it wide, Liu Yuchin. Ten. Thirteen. And it's a little bit lucky, the shot from Kimura uh, is... I, I, I don't believe he, he hit it as he wanted to, and it was spinning a bit while it was still uh, going on the other side of the net. Another very aggressive and successful return Sensei from Li Yunhui. 14, 10. Ah! That's long. And, and I have the feeling that, that the Japanese player, they have to change their tactics a little bit. The, the, the Chinese players are, are ready uh, for what they throw at them right now. And uh, we even see Kimura end up playing a, a clear here. Uh, that's uh, quite, quite unusual in a, in a men's doubles. quickly at the net and, and play a backhand shot behind his uh, uh, behind his body actually very good control big smash and uh, 
Nakamura can't defend it. 18-10 to China. 18-10. Oh. Oh, that's well done, cross court. Yeah, good variation here, and, and it takes uh, the Chinese defence by surprise. 18. Oh. Big smash coming down from a great height from Li Junhui. Smash height, 3.18 meters. Uh, very, very steep, isn't it? Yeah, and, and very good elevation from Lee Jun Hui. It's over. That's a lot of power in, in those legs. 19. Even though he doesn't look like a, a bodybuilder. <laughs> Different kind of strength. Exactly. <laughs> That's interesting. Again, uh, Li Junhui is, is attacking the low serve very hard, and the the net is moving. Uh, and the question is, was it the shuttle or or was it his racket? Because was it his racket, then uh, it was a fold, and, and the point should have been given to, uh, to Japan. Match point, 14. Well, the coach for the Japan team is standing up and he's remonstrating, but it's match point for China. I think no, it's he, not. <laughs> his partner made him change his mind. I think so. <laughs> Still a match point for China. Time! China have done it. The men's doubles goes to China. Li Junhui, Liu Yuqin. In a really epic contest. Power, an abundance of power from the two tall Chinese. Uh, they come through this one from a spirited one by China, Japanese pairing. This is the final. 21, yeah, the serve doesn't go over from Takeshi Kamura. 23 21. 21 16. The score in the second game. So the men's doubles go to the number three seeds. 23-21, 21-16 to China.
Life is good in this part of the world, but in the Gold Coast, it's surfer's paradise where the waves keep crashing in. Surfer's paradise in the heart of the Gold Coast on the eastern seaboard in the state of Queensland, Australia. It's a majestic place to come and visit. So much to do in a great outdoor life. It's the place to be fit. Ride the waves on Surfer's Paradise on the Gold Coast. Oh, what a match that was for the men's doubles. 2-1 China leads, and we move on to the women's singles, featuring Sun Yu from China, the number six ranked player in the world, and Akane Yamaguchi, number three in the world. ranking in March. She was the number four in the world. Bronze medal in the 2012 World Junior Championships. And this is Akane Yamaguchi. She's only 19 years of age. In March, she was the world number two. She's now number three. Two-time world junior champion, the Japanese player in 2013 and 14. Got three Super Series titles, including the 2016 Denmark in Korea. Okay, we're gonna toss red or black. Red, taking red. It's red. Service. This court. So our umpire is Ivo Cassell of Switzerland and service judges Hendrik Boas of Denmark. Well, in the head to head, Sun Yu leads Akane Yamaguchi 3 2. The last time they met was at the quarter final of the All England Championships in uh, March. Close this one, Lars. How do you see this one? Yeah, it's it's very close, and um, of course uh, Yamaguchi is, is under pressure because uh, Japan is uh, is two one down, and uh, and she's forced to win um, if they should stay alive in in the tie. That's why the the result of the men's double was uh, was so important because. Uh, I'm sure that Sun Yu is, is very pleased with uh, with the win from from the tall boys uh, because now uh, she can win the match, but but uh, or she can she can win the tie for China, but she she cannot lose it, and uh, and that's a much nicer feeling to to bring on court. So just the one match for the Chinese player in these championships. This is Akane Yamaguchi. 19 years of age, world number three. She was world number two in March. Didn't play against Malaysia in the quarterfinals. Didn't play against Germany. She beat Go Jin Wei in the group uh, matches in straight games. This is the head-to-head. Sun Yu leads 3-2. They met in the Yonex All England Open 2017. And uh, Yamaguchi won that. Look at the score. 21-23. It went to a, a third game to settle that. Very close to lead to uh, call this one.
gentlemen, on my right, China, represented by Sun Yu. And on my left, Japan, represented by Akane Yamaguchi. Japan to serve. La ball. Playing. Taller of the two by some distance. So you Service over. Yeah, indeed One she is, and, and a very uh, aggressive player. Um, she has uh, beautiful uh, attacking shots, um, and it's it's going to be a clash of styles. Uh, Yamaguchi is, uh, even though she plays a very nice attack here, it's uh, um, Service over. a more uh, defensively over. oriented player and. and uh, likes to work hard and, and play long rallies. Um, so the, it'll be a, a clash of styles, I presume. It's just in, well played. She's a little bit off balance in uh, the one so point just before the winner. Two, Yeah, and one. it was well anticipated by Shin Yu that uh, Yamaguchi would would play the, the net drop there and that's a mistake from uh, China's Sun Yu. Yes. Yeah and this save is is what she's so good at, Yamaguchi. Service uh, over. Two. Returning four. this one or two extra shots, and, and then there's a, a risk for the opponent that, that she gets too eager and, and makes a mistake. Well, that's a good smash. Moves well and three, two finishes off nicely here. Yeah, and it's it's wise of her, I think, to to take the initiative and and also play some attack because that uh, then she's also pushing uh, the weaknesses of of Sinu, who's uh, clearly Four, stronger in two. in her attacking play. Judgment from Sun Yu. Service over. Three, four. a good idea by Yamaguchi to Four, oh. play the angle in the front court but just played it slightly too tight and it stays on her own side of the net.
was a tremendous pickup by Yamaguchi yeah. to stay in the point. Yeah, and then the, the turnover, and, and uh, she can make a, a very accurate attacking shot uh, here. She anticipates the, the lift and the good cross board Six, attack. Four. A winner. Yeah, good over. placement of Sunyu. Five, six. Cross court power smash. Very nice control Five. here by Yamaguchi. Lifting it outwards and actually just inside the sideline. Beautiful control here by Yamaguchi. She's, she manages to to place her shots uh, throughout the rally to, so well that that uh, Sunyu can't come in with her attack, and, and then finally she surprises her with a with a stop drop here, uh, well disguised. Again, the same recipe, a, a lot of clears and lifts to so Sunyu's uh, deep forehand corner, and, and then she's Nine, moving her uh, a lot uh, back and forth on the court with the uh, drop shots in, in both sides. She uses a height, but she doesn't take a leap. She she Seven, plays a lot of these smashes nine. with her feet very much firm on the on the court. Yeah, there's not much she of a jump there at all. Whether that's to the, the heavily strapped knee has got something to do with it? No, I don't think so. But it's the way she plays it. Yeah, and it, it's very few uh, women singles players who who invest in uh, eight nine in. Uh, in making the jump smash, um, and and I, I think it is it's simply uh, the calculation is that it's it's the energy they have to spend on it is uh, too much. Yeah, it's too much compared to what they gain from it, and especially when you've got the height of the new, she she can already angle her shots. Um, so, uh, so I reckon over. they save the energy for for other purposes on court. Ten, Good point. Eight. Yamaguchi leading. Ten eight. Oh, 
Oh. We have an eight interval. At the interval, it is the uh, world number three player. Yamaguchi who leads 11-8. It seems like the, the instructions you knew got from uh, uh, very experienced uh, coaches. Uh, Jiang Ning, double Olympic champion, and and uh, Xia Zhuanzi, uh, former world champion, uh, has worked. And uh, she got a vital uh, start and a few points after uh, the mid-game interval here. Stretch, but not enough from Sinu. No, and again, Yamaguchi is, is successful in, so in her tactics of moving Sinu well, around, uh, making her move these long distances in and out from the net. Uh, play from uh, Kamaguchi coming in to the net. 13, 10. Yes. Yeah, and she makes a, a nice attacking variation here, attacking towards the body of uh, of Sun Yu, and and then she knows that the the return of that is likely to come in the center of the court, and she moves forward here and can kill it. Got there. Just on the line. Four points in it now. Kane Yamaguchi leading. Oh, a little disguise there. Well done. So it's over. Yeah, and the pattern. Uh, 11. 14. Is that that Sunyu has to win the win the rally within the the first few shots, uh, being very aggressive on uh, on Yamaguchi's high serves. Um, otherwise, she gets in in trouble if the if the rally goes on for for too long. Well, 14. This 
passes wide. Yeah, and Yamaguchi is using this tactics again of a lot of clears to one corner, but but forgets a little bit maybe to mix it up with, with other shots and, and to move uh, Sun Yu uh, full court and finishes with a, a little bit undisciplined uh, smash wide. This is also wide from Sun Yu. Yeah, and I'm sure that, that uh, the new uh, women's singles coach of, of Japan, Choi Shang Byom, will be more happy with the way she played this rally, where she's, she's back at, at the plan, moving Sunju around quickly, full court. Yeah, she is, and she's doing it so well. Kane Yamaguchi pulling ahead here by three points, leading 16-13 in this first game of the women's singles. A clever variation here in, in the service return from Sun Yu. She plays a, a high smash towards the corner, very accurate. 14-16. Uh, not full power, but very good control here. I think Yamaguchi has played a, a very 16. good first game here and, and most of the time uh, very wise as well. Then, then uh, now when we get towards the, the closing of, of the game, she's getting a little bit too eager and, and is making some unforced errors because she, uh, she wants it too much. point and Yamaguchi with a couple of late just outstanding pickups it's a hard worked point Service for both players 17 yeah, amazing rally 15. here and unfortunately it ends up uh, with a mistake from uh, yes. from Shun Yu but both players are playing really really well here this almost off balance it's long 18 15. It's the same recipe, she's 16, very aggressive on the 18. return of serve here, and one could suggest that, that Yamaguchi could, could uh, sometimes maybe variate the serve and, and go with a low serve uh, in order to prevent you to, uh, to start off the rally with, with this heavy attack. She's moving so well. Service over. Yeah, 
do the right. Thank you. 19, 16. Tremendous play. Yeah, very well Giant worked by Yamaguchi again. Called in. Challenge then from Sunyu. Shuttle called in. Sunyu of China is challenging this call. She needs. Oh, goodness. That's uh, well in. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Service over. 20 game point 17. Yes, game point 20. for this. Uh, well, she's an effervescent kind of player. Play. She bounces all around the court. Her court coverage is good. She's just 19 years of age. And she's got game point. Kane Yamaguchi. Tremendous variety from Akane Yamaguchi. And First game, one by Japan. She takes the 17. opening game in this women's singles against Sunyu of China, 21-17. Pretty impressive performance from Akane Yamaguchi in that first game. I just feel that Sun Yu has got to come up with something no. extra. Just... Yeah, she, she has to figure out a way of, of scoring points um, and 
also how to score in, in her own serve. Um, the thing she's been mostly successful with is attacking the high serve of, uh, of Akani Yamaguchi, but uh, she has to be able to, to win points in, in other ways as well. And I must say, Akani Yamaguchi has, has uh, appeared very convincing today, up until now. Serve is over. One, two. A bit of aggression there from the Chinese player. I just wonder, last does she need to be a little bit more aggressive? Yeah, but controlled aggressive uh, because uh, she, she can't just uh, hammer away because then uh, Yamaguchi's defense will will be too strong for that. So, so she she still has to play with a uh, with a good variety. Great pick up then from Yamaguchi. Two, all. Yeah, and a, a, a very good rally uh, that will give her some confidence actually. But here she, because here, her variety of shots uh, uh, makes uh, Yamaguchi make a make a lift that's that's too long. Again, she's a little bit over ambitious at the net. Yes, change it. Three, two. For the Hawkeye decision, Yamaguchi Play. was just testing uh, the length of her of her high serve and, and was uh, still disappointed that uh, they, they were short. I think this one's better though. This is wide, and uh, she was spot on with the last challenge. And she seemed pretty confident with uh, this one as well.
Making some new stretch and work so hard in the front court, isn't she? Yeah, and a good follow up here after the straight Four, smash. Five. And she's actually not far from returning this one, and, and then it would have been dangerous because uh, Yamaguchi was out of balance at the net. Both players are having a little bit of difficulties adjusting to uh, to this new end uh, after the uh, the change of sides. Uh, Yamaguchi uh, is struggling to to get the length, and uh, yeah, they actually both are. But uh, Sunyu is playing a little bit too long, and and uh, Yamaguchi is playing her backcourt shots a little bit too short. Snare from Sunyu. Uh, yeah, and it was otherwise a good position. We can see here, if you watch her feet, you can see that she's actually. Six, uh, five. It's still a short clear from Yamaguchi, so it's a good attacking position from uh, Sunyu, but uh, makes the mistake. Still trying to find the, the length of, of her backcourt shots uh, and uh, using some clears here, as we saw her do in, in the first game as well. Six. Um, oh. But it's still not the same quality as she had from, from the other side. And uh, and that means that she knew is, is in more control than that she was throughout the first game. Too strong from China's Sun Yi. Maguchi is now 7 6. Yeah, and Yamaguchi is in doubt whether to leave this Seven one if that was long as well, but decides to take Seven. it. But uh, oh. then she misses it, so. She might as well have left it and, and seen where, where it was landing. This one is wide. And a lot of tension in the game right now. Uh, not really Seven. living up to the quality of, of the first game where we saw some really uh, really nice rallies. Uh, hopefully, we will get that later on in, in this game as well. But uh, hard to adjust to uh, to the conditions on on these sides, respectively. Oh. Nine, seven. Stretch for yes. the taller girl here. Yes. Just look at the way that Yamaguchi just takes all the pace off it, and she stretching Sunyu with these shots. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yes. And Sunyu is probably expecting her to play a clear. She's done so many times before. Um, but Games this time the, 
nine. Very accurate drop shot. Is, is still struggling to give her clears enough uh, height and power um, from this uh, slightly slower side. Driving all over the court because of the quality and the accuracy we're seeing from Akane Yanaguchi. Yeah, and we've seen her successful with, with, with this tactics a few times that, that she plays a lot in one side and, and in one corner, one of the deep corners, and, and uh, then before she is used to drop shots as, as the attacking shots, but this time she goes cross court smash. Um, when she feels that that uh, Sun Yu is, is staying uh, and waiting for another straight shot, well played and good control on the on Ten, the sideline. Nine. Yes. for the uh, Chinese player. Serve is over. Yeah, and you see it here, I think the serve oh. again is slightly short and uh, a very strong attack again uh, on the service return from Sun Yu. Gucci. This time it's her turn to be all over the floor. Sun Yu at the interval second game leads 11-10. Gucci will be very pleased to see this lift is has the right depth uh, and also height goes over to you and beautifully placed in the back four. Lovely touch at the net here from Yamaguchi. Didn't see it, but that's well, the shot that sets up this, uh, the short lift that she can kill. China challenges. Hold out. Court 
ball is out on this uh, back line here. And Sunyu reckons it was in, and she's a mile out. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. 13, 11. This young lady, 19 years of age, tremendous control Play. of the shuttle, where it's going, and she knows where it's going. And she's working her opponent, as well, her tall opponent, having to work so hard. She's done well with the return of serve here, though. It's a new. Serve is over. 12, 13. Yeah, Yamaguchi, as I suggested, tried a a variation to the serve, but uh, the outcome was the same, uh, an easy point for uh, Sun Yu. Oh, that's great. She does, she does jump, and she's much the shorter of the two. Serve is over. She gets a little more elevation. Just have a look how she climbs here. Takes it early. And good placement cross court again. 14-12. Fantastic reaction. What reflex that was from Yamaguchi. 15, 12. Just a flick of the forehand. And the Japanese number three ranked player in the women's singles is now three points clear at 15, 12. Clear has been called. Called in. In. And Sunyu. Her challenge. Just, she's desperate for this to go her way. If it's not, it's going to be a four point gap here. Yeah, it's in, it's caught the line. Challenge unsuccessful. No challenge remaining. She's 16, been a bit uh, 12. wayward with her challenges. And she's now 16-12 down in the second game. And a game to love down as well in this match in the semi-final. Just wearing her Chinese opponent, she's wearing her down with a succession of drop shots, and she's just no pace on it. And the, the taller opponents having to work so hard. Thank you. And a beautiful display of, of a variety of shots here from uh, Yamaguchi. And, and I think she is, her confidence has grown well. after the last challenge here, where it was a clear shot that was actually on the line. Uh, and she's worked so hard in, in trying to find the, the length of, of uh, that particular shot from this side. Sun Yu might have some sore hamstrings at the end of this match. Great pickup from Yamaguchi. And uh, out. It's wide. Service over. Yes. Where is it? Went? Is it wet? Wet? Okay. Thank you. 13, 17.
Tremendous placement again from Yamaguchi. This is uh, an outstanding performance from Akane Yamaguchi. Reaction. Service so over. 14, 18. Yeah, and again, Yamaguchi is a little bit in doubt uh, in the backcourt whether to leave it or not. And decides too late to, to play the shot and can't control it. Gucci's agility around the court has been so impressive. Uh, very good defense there, good control, and then Shenyu gives her lift too much power. Thank wants you. to keep the pressure on Yamaguchi. So it's over. 19, 14. Just extraordinary retrieving from Yamaguchi. Yes. Yeah, it is, and, and like we saw in the last match, so there's a, an instance in the rally where 15, the net was, was moving, and uh, the Japanese coaches, they believe that. It was Sunyu's racket, and uh, the umpire thought otherwise. Bang. from the 19-year-old Akane Yamaguchi. Yeah. Japan have won the women's singles. Akane Yamaguchi, 19 years of age, has really looked the part in disposing of Match. Sun Yu of China. China. The number six ranked player for the world. And she is mightily happy with that performance, and so she should be. She had uh, too many questions which weren't answered by Sunyu. And this is the match point. Yeah, and she's very aggressive in uh, in this point as well, and it's hard for Sunyu to to keep moving the, the long distances that she was moved almost all the way through the match by Yamaguchi. B very impressive uh, performance by such a young player under a lot of pressure. 49 minutes on court, Yamaguchi wins 21-17, 21-15.
It's a wonderful sight. The Gold Coast of Australia in the state of Queensland where you could hardly say they have a winter here. It's the most beautiful view across the beaches in surface paradise where they come from far and wide. Nightlife is good. The food and wine is good. The entertainment is good. The Gold Coast is great. Well, what do we have here now? Because this tie is now locked at two all, and we're going to the women's doubles to decide it. And for Japan, they have the Olympic champions from Rio de Janeiro in Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi against the number four ranked women's doubles in the world. Here they are from China. Chen Jingzhen and Jia Yifan. Well, you'd, you'd say that the Olympic champions would have the edge here, and yet the number four ranked team. Chen, Ching Chen, and Jie Yifan. I think they're just ahead in the head-to-head. -head. But we face the possibility here that for the first time since 1993 in Birmingham, that was just four years after the inaugural Sudermann Cup, that China might not make the final of this wonderful tournament. In 1993, the final was Korea-Indonesia. Since then, China have been in every final, and they've won 10. Chin, black or red? Red. Red called. Red. Uh, yes. Ayaka to receive. Who will serve? Chen, who will serve? Thank you. Well, who would have thought it would have come down to this? To the women's doubles, the final match in this tie. This is Chen Jingchen. She's already been on today. Mixed doubles, she lost with Jiang Siwei. They lost to Yuta Watanabe and Arisa Higashino. So, Chen Jinfen, Chen at uh, number four in the world with uh, Jia Yifan. She's just 19 years of age. Two time world junior champions in 2014 and 15 three-time Super Series winners last year in Dubai, the French and the Australian, and six-time Grand Prix gold titles. They've only been on once against uh, Thailand, which they won in the uh, group stage. Didn't play against India. None of the Chinese players on court tonight played in that quarter-final against India. So Masaki Matsutomo, number one in the world from Tokushima, the Olympic champions from Rio de Janeiro, where they beat Denmark's Christina Pedersen and Camilla Ritter Yul. Both of them 27 years of age. They have two Asia championships between them in 2016 and 2017. They're the all England champions from 2016. And they've won everything that uh, they played. Quarter final and the group against Malaysia. That uh, all England championship, of course, is a Super Series event as well. But how about that then? Cheng and Jia lead the head to head 2 1. Last meeting in Dubai, 
the Chinese pair won last year in the Dubai World Super Series finals. The Chinese pair won this. So, <laughs> even though we have the Olympic champions, the reigning Olympic champions, the Chinese pairing have the edge. Trish Gubb of New Zealand is the chair umpire, and in the service judge chair, Michael Ready to play. Ferry Dahl. I hope I've said that correctly. He comes from Norway. Lars Uhr. Have I said that correctly? <laughs> You're close enough. I well, believe. no, come on. Give me the real Norwegian. No, but I'm not sure I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you would have watched that Olympic final, though. I, uh, I watched that uh, on first hand. Uh, behind the court. Very, very thrilling match. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Japan, represented by Ayaka Takahashi and Masaki Matsutomo. On my left, China, represented by Chen Ching Chen and Jai Yi Fan. China to serve, Jai Yi Fan to Ayaka Takahashi. Love all, play. Service over. And already we can see uh, that the tactics One. from both pairs, as, as oh. we would also expect, is, is to uh, to gain the initiative, uh, get the lifts, and, and play uh, the attack. So uh, we will have a, a lot of speed in, in this women's doubles match. Doubles know exactly what's on the line here. Place in the final. Where Korea awaits the winners of this semi final. You should have imagined the team talk to the Chinese pairing before they walked out. Rally. 
Yeah, very good exchange here, and, and okay. we can see a lot of transition here between offense and defense. Neither side wants to stay too long in, in defense. They they want to to get the initiative back on on their side of the of the net and uh, and try to win the point. Zin, Tia Ifan, the 19-year-old. Four. Yeah, good work by Judy Fang, and uh, she indicates that they want this uh, position where they are side by side when they're in offense, so they can cover the full width of the court. Just Four. slightly wide oh. by uh, Chin Kin Chin. And as we've seen in the other matches, we, we have to let the players get used to the conditions and uh, and get rid of, of some of the, the nerves that they will definitely so bring uh, Five. going into a, a match of, of this importance. Knee brace there is Ready. Masaki Matsutomo. Fun, can't keep so it in court. Five, all. Oh, a clever attack here on her, her left hip, uh, where it's it's difficult to, uh, yeah, sometimes like here return it, but also uh, control the shuttle because you are you tend to be in the in your own way, so to speak. Yeah. It's long. Six, five. Yeah, and Matsutomo, uh, just like Takahashi in the previous rally, uh, is playing a lot of drop shot variations and uh, that uh, is still difficult for, for the Chinese players to control uh, when they have to lift. Chin, chin. Over. She's Six. used to the conditions, to the court. Oh. She played in the uh, mixed doubles, which they lost. Yeah, and surely she wants to to repair her performance in, in the first mixed. As well, that's a terrific smash from Chen Chin Chen. Seven, six. Yeah, very well placed smash here between the tram lines. That takes Matsutomo a bit up by surprise. A lot of power using the full body rotation here. And this time, Jia Ifan. Yeah, it's actually Eight. a similar placement of the smash, just uh, in the opposite Six. side. Chin, give them the shuttle. Chin. 
the umpire. Not Seven, messing around. Eight. Trish Dub of New Zealand in the umpire's chair. Challenge. China challenges called out. Chen 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 challenging this shuttle call long. And indeed, long it is. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. The hard work from Eight Takahashi four. in the backcourt piece off. Both the Chinese players are 19 Wait. years of age. Matsutomo is 25, Takahashi is 27. Chen. Service over. And she's got a business Nine, face on here. Eight. Yeah, and as we saw in, in the previous match where Yamaguchi had difficulties playing uh, her clears long enough, uh, the same was the case here for Takahashi's clear was too short and and then uh, the attack from, from the Chinese girls is, is just too strong. I think that's in. That is in. Yeah, I think the, Ten. the sideways Eight. drift there just keeps it inside. And that's why it's misjudged by Takahashi. Hands. So it's over. Nine. Ten. Play. Serve here from uh, Machitomo takes uh, Chen Ping Chen slightly by surprise, and uh, she does get down to smash it, but uh, very good um, return of smash uh, from the defense of uh, the Japanese. in the first game in a tense match here. They lead 11-10. Seconds. 20 seconds. 
coach leave the court? Chin. 11-10. Play. So much riding on this match. This match decides the tie, decides the semi-final. Takahashi, return of serve, finds the net. Ten. The advantage of being left-handed. 13. Yeah, exactly, and that's a very clever attack from uh, Chen Ping Chen that, that sets her up at the net. First the clear, and then this quick snap with the forearm that surprises uh, Matsutomo a little bit. Straight at Misaki Matsutomo. 14. And 10. suddenly there is a four point lead for the Chinese. Yeah, and a good, good placement here of the last match on the, on the left shoulder here. Of Matsutomo. Judge. Service over. Yeah, and it's still difficult for, for the Chinese uh, players to control the, the lifts um, from this uh, slightly faster side that, that they're on now in the first game. from Chen. Over. Yeah, and, and then there's a, a lot more variation in the offense and especially in the placement of the hearts or the power smashes from the Chinese girls as compared to the Japanese girls who are smashing a lot towards the center of the court. Um, we've seen a, a lot of uh, variety in the attack from, from the Chinese girls, especially after the mid-game interval. Over. Finds the net this time. 12-15. But it was... I know it didn't go over, but it, it was another variation uh, that they haven't used for a while. Uh, found the gap there and uh, I'm not 16. sure whether wow. either of the Chinese girls would have been able to retrieve it but uh, she doesn't give her shot enough power look at that it would have been tough to reach for Chen Kun Chen
inches wide. Chen doing what she likes to do, and that's a little 17. sort of victory march for the point. 12. Yeah, and again, uh, Jia Yifang is, is uh, successful in attacking on the um, on the outside of uh, of the player straight in front of her. Seventeen twelve. have no answer 18. at the moment to what's wow. coming their way from the Chinese. No, and again, first hard attack from uh, Chen towards the center, and then Jifang from the net attacks the outside. And again, it's another emphatic winner from Chen to Chen. 12. They really have played aggressive in your face badminton. Really knocked the Japanese pairing out of their comfort zone. Yeah, it's very difficult for, for the Japanese girls uh, to uh, to play the defensive qualities that, that we know they, they also possess. Drop shot to finish the point and to give them 20. game point. Game point, 12. I think the team talk must have been uh, quite something, quite stirring, because this has been a stirring performance in this opening game. First game First in game the women's China. doubles. My word, it was 12. impressive. 21 points to 12 after 21 minutes. The Japanese pair of Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi take their time. Meanwhile, the keenness of China to get on with this. Chen 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 and Jie Fan were on court, waiting. Second game. Anxious to get going. Love all. They really Play. were aggressive 
in that opening game, 21-12. Japan have it all to do now. This one, she's waiting with her forehand in, in defense, and, and then she can play with a lot of power towards the back corner. This is wide, outstanding defence by the Chinese. They kept Japan out for Two. so long in that rally. One. Yeah, and we can see it, it pays off for the Japanese that they get to change the formation. Okay. First, Matsutomo was doing a lot of different varieties from the backcourt. Uh, and then they, they changed to their favourite formation with, uh, with Takahashi in the back. And they changed once again, and, and Matsutomo could uh, put on too much pressure for the Chinese. But they had to work very hard for this point. That's why they do look better, they do look more comfortable with Matsutomo at the front, Three, don't they? One. Yeah. That's, that's uh, favorite formation, and, and she's so skillful with her racket and has just good touch and a very good sense of finding the gaps uh, in the front court. And uh, Takahashi uh, can use her her powerful attack from the back court and set her up. Uh, once again, as we've seen several times uh, in the first Three. game, she's successful by smashing, actually aiming at the, the single sideline there. Uh, and just killing it from in the service return. Shot Takahashi, and it doesn't come off. Three, all. Ten. Chinese team, they've got their jump, their drums going. They can sense that China have got a, a hold on this match in the women's doubles. 
Japan have got to try and break the rhythm of the two 19-year-old Chinese players. point is played with blood, sweat and tears. And unfortunately for the Japanese, Takahashi doesn't look very uh, comfortable on, on court. Japanese got to do here last to Five, try and turn this around. Four. Yeah, but I think they will be they will be very pleased with the last two rallies where they've managed to break down the the, the Chinese defense and and win from the offense because that's that's what they have to do. They it doesn't seem they can really rely on their defense today. Oh. And, uh, that means it's, it's the offense that has to so to carry them through. But in the offense, Five, I think they, they need to four. use more variation, especially in, in where they place the the power smashes. It's, it's a little bit too easy to anticipate for, for the Chinese girls um, where the smash is going to come. It's wide from Masaki Matsutomo. Six. Five. Serve is wide. Seven, five. And Chen 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 is celebrating like the, the match was already over. Fan goes for the attack on the on the outside of the, of the Japanese player, and, and maybe this time she went a little bit too far wide. Is it wide? Yes, it is. It's out, out of court. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Service over. This is tight, isn't Play. it? This is really tense. Oh. Yeah, it, it, it is very intense. It has been all night, uh, I think. Uh, a very, very thrilling uh, tie we've uh, witnessed here.
That's good play from Matsutomo. Kept Japan in the point. Yeah. Seven. Well done by Matsutomo. She keeps her calm here, even though she's under a lot of pressure from aggressive clears and, and drop shots from uh, Jia Yifang. second game and they took the first game 21-12 Brilliant point, yeah, all man. four players. Exactly, marvellous defence by the Chinese and so, a little bit of Eight, luck as well. Nine. I think they they return uh, the shuttle three times uh, with the frame of the racket. Thank you. Uh, and the last time here, uh, the fourth time, uh, it's again with the frame from uh, Chen Kunqing, but. Uh, Luck had uh, run out for her. Play. Second successive mistake Nine. for uh, Chen. Yeah, and Masutomo in this rally manages to, to lift, so Chen is out of balance. Uh, and, and cannot put in her power smash as has been so successful. She can only manage to, to play the drop shots. It's wide from Jia and Fan. Ten, nine, play. So just a point separates them in this second game. Japan leading 10-9. They'd love to find some of their Olympic form from last August in Rio de Janeiro, where they won Olympic gold. Eleven nine and interval. At the interval, it is Japan who have a lead of two points. They lead in the second game after 16 minutes, 11-9. Twenty seconds. 
Point lead. Japan, they've got to find some inspiration in the next couple of points. Because uh, leading up to the interval, they, they made three or four uh, a little bit, or they played some undisciplined rallies and, and made some mistakes that uh, they can't afford to uh, to make if, uh, if they want to uh, to win the match and by that the tie for China. just for the point, right. it's square now at 11 all. Yeah, and the, the Chen Kun Chen keeps putting the pressure on uh, Machotomo here, moving her back and forth with, with drop shots and, and clear shots. from Chen Chi Chen are getting longer. She sees the value of, of each point as they edge ahead by Ready. one. 12-11. Play it forehand and plays a beautiful shot. Yeah, straight at Matsutomo, and she can't cope with it, she can't defend. 14 11. That is now five straight points for China since the interval. And, and I have a feeling here that, that the Chinese girls, they are playing to win, uh, whereas the Japanese girls, they, they are playing uh, to avoid losing. And, and, and that's a big difference. Um, Good smash. Uh, good action here from uh, Takahashi. 12, 14. And one thing we can be sure of is that, that they never give up the Japanese. They, they are so good at, even when not playing their best, to stay within reach and, and look for the opportunity for a, a, a comeback. Point. And whereas 
Uh, for a long time, the, the Chinese girls have been very clever not to smash when they're out of balance at, at Matsutomo. But this time, Jia Yifan gets a little bit too eager on this one, and then Matsutomo can play her, her overhead okay. counter attack, which she's very, very good at. And, uh, and then the, the Chinese player gets in trouble. the point. 15, 13. Yeah, and again, a successful smash down the line. Added a little bit of slice to make it go further outwards. Um, and, and that has been their answer to most of the, of the flick serve from the Japanese. between the two of them. Service over. 14, 15. Play. Yeah, and Jia Yifan knows that, that she's supposed to move in and, and cover that one because uh, it's, it shouldn't be a surprise for, for the Chinese girls that, that the attacks come through the center of the court in between the Chinese uh, players. from Rio de Janeiro. Facing two 19-year-olds here from China, Chen Ching Chen and Jia Yifan. Placed in the final at stake to meet Korea. Tomo to challenge Jia Yifang at, at the net, but uh, play. I, play. I think this one, uh, but I think they, they need to take some risks because if, if they just keep playing the same way uh, they have done, then uh, so far in, in this match, then uh, there's a big risk that they will end up as, as losers. Chen. getting a little impatient with uh, Chen. She wanted to go off and dry her hair. And she crashes the net with that forehand. 16. Oh. So that two-point lead has been whittled away. It's 16 points each. Yeah, now towards this, the, the end of the second game, the, Chinese girls both are, are getting a little bit eager and, and maybe losing some of that discipline that, that they have uh, played so well with uh, up until now. to play it yeah, and again 17, the Chinese girls are banking 16. on their defense I, I still think they are 
a little bit too eager in the offense and they give Matsutomo the opportunities of playing her great counterattacks. But uh, they survive it uh, through their, their beautiful defense here. has been played at the most ferocious pace by both China and Japan. Chen hasn't stopped running. I mean, that's after the points have been scored. And can there be a dramatic 17, twist 16. here for Japan? They've got to win this, otherwise they're out, and the semi-final is China's. Control here. 17 the, all. The last push for a moment. I thought it would go long, but uh, well placed by Hachitomi. Uh, Three great smashes from Jia Ifan. And again, two smashes on the outside of uh, Takahashi who sets them up at the net. 10, and there is one, and it's 18, 18. points all. Service with Masaki Matsutomo. They're a game to love down. They've got to win this one, take it to a third. serve was not uh, very good quality either, so the importance of the game shows off here. And it will be interesting to see who, who can stay calm and, and decide this game. by Japan. Yeah, and so a very over. entertaining rally here. 19 all. Play. The Japanese girls want to, to keep playing with the same shuttle. Ayaka Takahashi at 19 all serves. Fault called against Japan. Yes. 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 Yeah, the umpire calls a fault that, that they have touched the net. There is no discussion here. The umpire 20. Match point 19. says 
the net was touched. Uh, yes, it was. Yes, and there's Gia Ivan. She's pointed to the umpire, pointed to the player, and now it is match point. Match point in the women's doubles. Right. Match point for China to win this dramatic semi-final. And to knock out the Olympic champions from Rio. They've done it! China! Two 19-year-olds, Chen Jingchen and Jie Yifan, have knocked out the Olympic champions from Rio de Janeiro. They have won the women's doubles and they have won the semi-final for their country. And they will make the final and they will go and play Korea in the final tomorrow. Japan were never realistically in this women's doubles. China played aggressively. A women's doubles full of emotion and this was how it finished. What drama we've had here today. China win the women's doubles. In the most inspired performance, it was an aggressive brand of badminton we saw from them. China celebrates the thought that they might not do it, never entered their heads. Final score here, 21-12, 21-19, the women's doubles going to China and the tie going to China. China are through to the final. Amazing scenes here for China, just 19 years of age, Jie Yifan, and 19 years of age, Chen Jingchen. They win the women's doubles. And so it finishes 3-2 for China in this extraordinarily dramatic 
semi-final here on the Gold Coast where the mixed doubles went to Japan. They took the lead, the mixed doubles went to Japan, then the men's singles, but that was tight. That went to China, but it was a very tight match against uh, Lin Dan and Kenta Nishimoto. And then the men's doubles, that also went to China, so they took a 2-1 lead. Li Junhui, Liu Uchen. And it came to the women's singles, and Akane Yamaguchi, another 19-year-old, coming through against Sun Hu, which left it all then to the women's doubles. And in a dramatic final match, the Olympic champions from Rio de Janeiro were knocked out by Chen and Jia. So earlier, we saw Korea coming through 3-1 against Thailand. Tonight, China scraped through against Japan to make yet another final. So our final tomorrow will be China against Korea. A marvellous day's entertainment in the semi-finals. More to come to the final day tomorrow here at the Gold Coast Centre for the final. Good night.